Hello, I'm Bob Ross, and I'd like to welcome you to the 30th Joy of Painting series. If this is your first time with us, please allow me to extend a personal invitation for you to join us each show here as we take some big unorthodox brushes and about a dozen colors, and I'll show you step by step how to, how to paint some beautiful little paintings very easy. And if you've been with us before, please allow me to thank you for inviting us back for another series of painting shows. Tell you what, let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. I have an old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched double prime canvas, but you use any size as convenient. And I've taken today a little bit of contact paper and just cut an oval out of it and stuck it right on the canvas. Then we've taken a little bit of gray and black gesso and just painted a little design using an old liner brush and all of this is done with a natural sponge. I just took a sponge and just sort of gobbed like that. Very easy, just take a sponge. I use a natural sponge because it has, it has a lot of little different things in it. Man-made sponges are too symmetrical. So just gob it on like that and, and then let it dry. Then we've covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid clear. And the clear is on there just to make it slick because this is a wet on wet painting technique. So I tell you what, let's just take off and do it. I'm going to start today with a little bit of yellow ochre. Now these are oil paints, so they're fantastic. A little yellow ochre on the two inch brush, like so. Just, just put a little on there. Let's go up right up here. And we can go up in here, and I'm just going to take the yellow ochre, and we just paint the sky right over the top of the gesso. Don't worry about it. Just paint right over it. The ochre is transparent enough that we'll still see all of our little designs and little tree indications back there. And that's really all we're doing. It's just covering it. That easy. There. See? Easiest thing in the world. As I say, this is a painting technique that even if you've never painted, you can do. Absolutely can do. We try to make it as simple and as easy as it can be. We've designed tools and different colors here that make this painting technique work for anyone. All right. And basically, we just covered the entire canvas with a little bit of the yellow ochre. Now it's mixing with the liquid clear that's on there, and it just slides on very easy. All right, let's make us a color. I think today, I'm going to make a brown out of a, we use sap green and a lizard crimson. The two together make a gorgeous brown. Very pretty. And I'm going to mix it a little bit to the reddish side. You can go to the green side or the red side. It's up to you. It's up to you. I'm going a little to the reddish side today, though. Okay. Let me just wipe the old knife on the paper towel. And we'll be in business. I just use the same old dirty brush. It seems to be working okay. We'll go right into a little bit of that brown that we made. Once again, sap green and a lizard and crimson. Okay. Now, I'm going to start on the outside and begin using little crisscross strokes, little X's. Begin blending that color inward. Ooh, isn't that gorgeous already? Those colors just go together so well, so well. A little more paint on the brush, and off we'll go. Now, if you've painted with me before, you know that, that we don't make mistakes here. All we do is have happy accidents. And all that means is that we learn very quickly to work with anything that happens in this style of painting. There's no right, there's no wrong. We only want to make paintings that are very happy, very simple, and that, once again, that you can do. Shoot, painting's no fun if you can't do it. All right. Maybe a little touch more over in here. And we're not trying to teach you to copy here. We want to teach you how to create certain effects, certain illusions, and turn you loose on the world, because each and every one of us will see nature through different eyes, and what you see is what you should paint. All right, let's wash the brush. <laughs> That's the most fun part of the whole technique. Since these are oils, we wash our brush with odorless paint thinner. We'll shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil. That really is the fun part. All right. I want to take a little bit of titanium white. Just a little bit, right on the corner of the brush. Just tap a little bit in there. Like so. Okay, now we have titanium white just on one corner. I'm going to put the indication of a light source up in the, up in the sky. So decide where it lives. 
and we'll start right there and begin working like so. Just start working it outward. We want that to be the brightest area in the painting. Now titanium white is opaque. Can't see through it. But if you put it on thin enough and it mixes with the, the yellow ochre that's already on there in the clear, it'll be transparent enough that we can still see our little trees and all the little indications that we put on there with the, with the black and the, and the gray gesso. About like it. But already, doesn't that make a beautiful effect? It looks like the sun's just burning through there. Mm. I like to get up early in the morning and walk through the woods when the sun's just beginning to come up and it just, it shines through the trees. I think it's one of the most beautiful times of the day. All the little animals are out looking for breakfast. And I, I hunt with a camera. I go out in the woods with my camera, take pictures of scenes and all the little critters. All right. Something about like it. And you blend it to any, de any degree of brightness that you want. Once again, it's totally and completely up to you. There. But doesn't that look like the sun right there that's just shining? You can almost see rays already coming right through. That black gesso is fantastic. It, it just opens the doors to so many avenues of creation. <laughs> I, like to, I like to get you excited with these things and turn you loose. And it's unreal what you can do. Let's take some black. Midnight black. Get a little sap green, a little lizard and crimson. We'll just mix them together here. Put some Van Dyke brown in there too. What the heck? Doesn't matter. Good dark color. All right. Now I want to begin creating the, the illusion of foliage that's growing all back here in the woods. Things that are closer to us. We'll see more detail in these. We'll go right into that dark color we made. But just, just give the brush a little push right there. That's all. Now then, I'm going to use these dark areas that we put in there with the gesso. But I'm just going to take the corner of the brush and begin begin designing all kind of little trees and happy little things that live here in our world. All of our little critters have got to have a place to, to hide, a place where they feel safe. And this is it. This is it. But you could do this with a one inch brush or the two inch brush. It doesn't matter. Just whatever's, whatever feels comfortable for you. There we are. A one inch brush works just as well. Okay, something about like that. See down here we have the black gesso. We don't even have to worry about it. Let's go on the other side. Yeah, we don't want it left out. Maybe just sort of look at your painting and each painting, each painting that you do will be unique and different. So when you're painting, don't just try to copy. Shoot, that's no fun. Do your own thing. We just really want to teach you how to do it. There. Something about like that. I like to have these old hangy down bushes. Just sort of hang around, have a good time all their life. There we are. Now then, I'm gonna take, 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 take the old script liner brush. We'll take a little white, a little bit of brown, mix it together. I wanna make this paint very thin. That's the reason I put the, the paint thinner with it. Very thin. Let's go up in here, and here, and there, and there, and here. We'll put in the indication of a few little tree trunks. Now, one of our golden rules, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. The first layer of paint we put up here is very thick. Our oils are unique. They're very dry. They're very, very firm. So by having a firm paint on the canvas, then we can take layers of thinner paint and paint right over the top of it without them mixing together. You know how it is to become a mud mixer. If you've painted, you've mixed a little mud in your life. But I like this because it allows you to actually paint while it's all wet. You can see a vision in your mind and, and put it on canvas before it escapes. There we go. Just a few little limbs and sticks. We're going to put leaves on these little bushes, so some of them will go away. All right. Now then. Tell you what, there's a two inch brush, not too dirty. We'll take a little black, go right into that yellow, makes a beautiful green, something like so. Let me grab some sap green on there. Yeah, I like it. 
I have cadmium yellow here, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, there it is, and a little bright red. I'm going to use all of these colors in varying amounts, and we'll paint the foliage with those. All right, let's go right up in here. Once again, you could, you could use a one-inch brush just as easy. Today, I thought I would just use an old two-inch brush. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. Sometimes you're a little more comfortable with a smaller brush. But either one will work. Either one will work. Sometimes this old big brush sort of scares you just because of its size. Whoops. Put a little more paint on there. There. But don't be afraid of it. Shoot. You know, an oil painting, what's so great about it? You really can, you can work on it for several days. It'll stay wet on the canvas for several days. And if you don't like something, you know, all you got to do is take the knife, zip it right off, and do it again. There are no mistakes. There are no mistakes. Only a few little happy accidents now and then. I'm trying to make this color a little bit darker back in here. In my mind, there's not going to be as much light back in here. It's going to start getting darker and darker back in there. Besides that, all my little animal friends, they need a little place to hide that's quiet and secure. And that looks like it right there. Maybe in this series, maybe I'll show you an, a new little squirrel that I'm raising. If you've painted with me before, you know I'm a sort of an animal nut. It's an understatement of the month, isn't it? But I'm, I've got a new little squirrel. <laughs> I call him Peapod Jr. Because Peapod was a little squirrel that lived with me for quite a while. And he used to live in my pocket. He liked to stay in my pocket and sleep. And so does this one. So we call him Peapod Jr. There we are. All right. A little more paint on the brush. But just put in the indication of all these little leaves. Think about shape and design. Don't just hit it random. I know it, it looks like you just, you get carried away and just sock it in wherever. Think about clumps little patterns that grow in trees and bushes. There's a limb back here where all this is attached. Think about how it would, how it would flow there. All right, and maybe down in here, there's another one. It's up to you. You decide where, how many, what color. It's what's so great about painting. You make the decisions. On this piece of canvas, you literally have unlimited power. When I go home, I don't have any power over anything but the garbage. It sits there and waits for me to take it out. But here, mm, here I can move rivers. I can change mountains. And so can you. All right, let's go on the other side over here and paint some of that. It's getting jealous. I'm going to add the least little touch of paint thinner to my brush just to thin it down. There. Remember this golden rule. Thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So always, always try to keep thickest paint on first. If you'll do that, you probably won't have any problems. There we are. You know, it's nice. This is the 30th Joy of Painting series. Almost unbelievable. There's 13 shows in each series. It means there's nearly 400 shows. And here where we filmed the show, they gave me a big party to celebrate the 30th, the 30th Joy of Painting series. And well over 200 of our friends came. It was so very nice, so very nice to know that so many people care and would take the time to wish us well. There we are. Just little bushes. I see something. I see something. I know I get a little crazy, but <laughs> that's okay. It's our world. We can do that. I'm going to take some liquid white, a little bit of titanium white, mix them together just to thin the paint. That's the only reason. A little phthalo blue. Just a little touch. There we are. So we have liquid white, titanium white, and a touch of phthalo blue. Let's go up in here. In my world, I see something right here. As you paint, you begin to see things. Watch, watch, watch. Maybe right here is a little watery fall. It just sort of zip and falls over. There it comes, hits down here and splashes. There. 
Isn't that cute? Just a little watery fall out here in the woods. And maybe it just slides right along in here. La la. <laughs> Comes right on along wherever you want it to go. What's that old saying? It helps to be crazy or something? There. Maybe there's a little loop right there. Just let, let your imagination take you to any world that you want to go to. Because you can do that. You really and truly can do that. It's sort of nice you can escape from from reality once in a while. Sometimes it's nice just to to create your own world and sort of slip off into it. And painting, painting sort of allows me to do that. A lot of people paint for that very reason. There we go. Now we have a little watery fall. It lives right there. We need something to contain it. Right now it's just sort of hanging loose. Let's take, clean off a little spot to work little spot to work. We'll take uh, Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, a little dark sienna in it. Just mix them together. Okay, I'm going to go over here and get some paint thinner. And thin this paint down. Just take paint thinner and put in it. Just to thin it down. I'm just using a knife to dip in that old paint thinner bucket. Just like so. We'll thin that down. And over here, I'm going to take a little touch of the, I'm going to use a little liquid white. I'm going to put a little black and brown in it. I want a thin light color too. There we are, maybe a little more black in there. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Just sort of get it to whatever flavor you want it to be. Okay, now then wipe the knife. I'm going to find a filbert brush, number six filbert brush. I'm going to take it through this thin, dark color, both sides, both sides, right through that thin color. Then I'm going to take one side and go through the light color. So now we got light on one side, dark on the other. Hmm, sneaky, huh? Now we can come right up in here and in one stroke we can paint some nice little rocks. Nice little rocks that sort of, they sort of hold this waterfall in, keep it from getting away. Nothing worse than a waterfall that's got away on you. And maybe there's several little stones and rocks and things that live in there. You decide. And you put them wherever you think they should live. It's totally and completely up to you. Going back to my brush, it's got the blue watercolor on it. And just sort of clean up the little foots on these stones so they fit. All right. Hmm. You know, if you've painted with me before, you know I have an obsession with large trees gets me in trouble sometime. But I think I think I need a big tree in this painting. Take black Van Dyke Brown. We just mix them. I got a number three fan brush. Let's go up in here. Okay, this is your bravery test. I'm gonna start right here and go and make a big old gnarly, gnarly tree that lives right there. There he is, big tree. Maybe he's got big root off the bottom and hangs over like so, wherever, wherever. Maybe there's an arm up here that just reaches up to the sky. Big old arm on this tree. Just wherever, wherever. Shoot, we'll have an arm over here too. It doesn't matter. Trees grow ever which way imaginable. Certain kinds of trees have certain basic shapes, but other than that, they just grow however. Trees are free. I'm going to take the script liner brush, some paint thinner. I'll thin the paint down until it's literally mm, almost like ink. Turn the bristles. It brings it to a nice sharp point. See there? Nice and sharp. And we can go up in here and we can begin picking out little arms and limbs. Maybe here's an old dead limb. Yep, right there. He just hangs around. We can put as many as we want. If you have enough paint thinner though, it'll just slide right over the top of all that without any problem. There. And you decide how many arms are on your tree. It's really up to you. I know you get tired of hearing me say that, but I think painting is such an individual thing that we really want people to learn to just paint what they feel, what they want to see. Not what somebody tells you you have to paint. There are no rules. The only rule is 
painting should make you happy. You should enjoy it. Enough bad stuff in the world. Shoot, the painting should be fun. I'm gonna take my knife, get a little white. Uh, we'll put a little black in it, make a gray color. About like that. That's a nice gray. Cut off a little roll of paint. We'll go right up in here. And maybe we'll just put the indication of a little highlight that lives right along the edge of this tree. See, just put it on like that, blend it back. Just something like that wherever. There you go. There. Over in here, a little bit of dark color. Just sort of let them work together so it looks like bark. Just growing like that. Very easy to do. Now you could take your liner brush and whatever and you could make bark with it. Shoot, sometime I make it with a filbert. It just depends on what kind of effect you're after, what your mood is that particular day. Doesn't much matter. Painting, once again, is nothing but games of illusions, and you should create the kind of illusions that make you happy. All right, let's get crazy. Yeah, let's take some black, a little sap green, mix it together. This tree needs some, needs some hair on it, like I have some nice leaves. There we go. There they go, see them? Just a few little happy leaves that live up here on this tree. Something about like that. There we are. All right. Let me grab my other two inch brush that we were using to make the little leaves and bushes. Put some sap green. I want this quite dark. Quite a bit of sap green in there. Quite dark though. Just tap like so. Let's go up in here. And let's put the indication of a few highlights right up on that old tree. Just a few. A little more color on the brush. There. Just think about basic shape. That's all we're looking for. And once again, I want this to stay quite dark. I don't want it to distract the eye to the top of the canvas. I want your eye to go right there when you look at this. There we go. About like so. And that's pretty good for a little tree. Put too much, it'll get It'll get too distracting, we don't want that. Little, little grassy areas right in here. Just sort of bring it all together. There we are. Once again, you could use the one inch brush just as well to create all these little effects. Doesn't much matter, either one works and works equally, equally good. A little bit of paint thinner, you can put a little stick and twig here and there. You just decide where they live and put some in. It's nice to have a few of these things in there. They show, they show different planes in your painting. All right, maybe even over here, a couple little ones. Okay, I think we're down to the moment of truth. Let's take the contact paper off and find out what we have. This, this is always exciting when you remove the contact paper and you look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous little thing? This is something though that is just, it's a marvelous gift to give people and they, they can't figure out how you painted a round painting on your canvas. Let's take a little paint thinner, a little bit of the bright red, and we'll sign this little rascal. Now I always sign with bright red, but you sign with any color that makes you happy. Once again, I'm gonna get this as thin as ink. It's really, really thin there, see? And work the bristles in. There we go. Let's go right up in here, and we'll sign this little rascal maybe right there. Up to you. Really hope you've enjoyed this little painting, and I hope you try it, because it'll bring you a lot of pleasure, and it's not that difficult to do. If you do it, if you have a moment, take a picture and send to us. We'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to see what you're doing. Until next time, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless my friends. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today I'm going to do something that's very unique. I think you'll enjoy it. Let's start out and have run all the colors across the screen that you'll need to paint along with this. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got going up here today. Today I've taken our regular old canvas, pre-stretched double prime canvas, and I've painted it with black gesso. I've allowed the black gesso to dry completely, 
and then I've covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid clear. Little, little amount. It doesn't take much. Then I put a little bit of Prussian blue over it. Today I want to show you how to make an exciting effect on the canvas and then I'll change and put up a canvas that's already done and we'll continue on and paint a, paint a happy little painting. So let's do that. As I say, I've got this covered with liquid clear and a little bit of Prussian blue. I want a blue hue to this. I'm going to dip my brush into a paint thinner. I'm going to go into a little bit of brown. A little. This is just a little bit of a oh, dark sienna. A little brown, a little blue. But notice how thin the paint is. Now paint thinner has a violent reaction with liquid clear. And we're depending on that to create some gorgeous effects. Okay, let's go up in here. As I say, this is very thin, and once it hits this liquid clear, gorgeous things will happen. And we'll just, we'll just do something about like it. Now, it'll continue to work, sometimes maybe 15, 20 minutes. That's why we're going to change canvases. So it has time to work and, and dry. But I want to show you how it's made. But by just taking this brush and doing something like so, get nervous, you can make some of the most gorgeous effects you've ever seen that easy. There, see, just let these colors play and dance and maybe they come around. You can make big old things that look like wood with big knots in them. It's up to you. You decide what kind of design you want. There. Take a little white here and there, but it must be very thin, have a lot of paint thinner, so that all these gorgeous little things will happen for you automatically. See them? Look at that. Already, they're beginning to work. As I say, the paint thinner and liquid clear will have a violent reaction. And you can turn the brush to make effects. Just let it, just let it dance around on the canvas. And if you don't like one, you can come back and go over it and change it. Because, as you know, this piece of canvas is your world and you can do anything that you want to do here. There we are. Something about like it. The blue underneath is being picked up and it will create a blue hue to the whole painting. There. And as I say, you can go back and forth and add color anywhere that you want it and just change this continually. There. But that's basically all there is to it. You can just take paint thinner and go back over this just with plain paint thinner and it'll really cause it to separate. Experiment a little bit when you're at home and you'll find many, many different ways of doing this and use a multitude of colors. Don't just use the colors that we use here on TV. Use any color that your heart desires. There. But see how, see how that's beginning to create all those beautiful illusions? Now then, as I mentioned, I want to change canvases and put one up that's already dry. And to do that, let me just reach up here. Excuse me just a second. Reach right up here. Take this one off. And I have one here that's already been done. And I've put a little bit of contact paper around it, just leaving a section open. And I'll show you how you can take this and make a gorgeous painting that's very simple and very, very easy. Anybody can do it. All right. Now, once again, this is dry. I've allowed it to dry. And you might want to lay it flat while it's drying, depending on how much thinner you put on the canvas when you're producing the effect. All right. Now, let's start off. And we're going to cover all of this with just liquid white, just like we would on a regular painting. Just cover it. Normally I have this done when we come on the air, but I wanted you to see this from start to finish so you can make your own masterpiece at home. There, just a very thin little coat of liquid white, just enough to sort of cover it up. About like that. That's all we're looking for. There. That's all there is to putting liquid white on a canvas. Hey, now we get to wash the brush. <laughs> if you've painted with me before, you know, that's my most favorite thing on here, is washing the old brush. Actually, it's my way of getting even with the crew for picking on me. All right, shake off the excess. And just beat the devil out of it. And you can cover everything in, a, in about a 10-foot radius if you're not careful. Okay, let's go into a little bit of alizarin crimson, just a small amount on the 2-inch brush. The painting I'm going to do today, be a, let's just do a very simple little painting, easy little painting, because it's really the background that I want you to, 
I want you to practice with and try and, and fall in love with because it is so much fun. I'm going to put a little lizard and crimson right there. I like that. We'll go right into a little the Prussian blue. Same old brush. The Prussian blue is so much stronger than the crimson. You can do that without washing the brush. Go back up in here. And we'll just start with our little crisscrosses, little X's, little X's, something about like that. There. Okay, I'll tell you what, maybe we'll have a little water in this one. You know me, I love water. So maybe we'll put just a tiny bit down here at the bottom. There we are. About like that. And with that, we can, we can turn this in, I think, to a very nice little painting. Let's wash the old brush again. I just want an excuse to, just want an excuse to wash the brush. There. All right. Fantastic. We got it. Now then, shoot, we'll just use that same brush. It's working pretty good. I'm going to go right into titanium white. Just tap it very firmly. Tap it right into some titanium. And we'll go up in here. And maybe in our world, there lives, yep, you're right, a happy little cloud. It just floats around here and has a good time all day. About like that. It's the easiest way I've ever found just to make a little cloud. Just tap it. I've got several two-inch brushes going. Let me get a, a clean one here so I can just gently blend this very lightly. Three hairs and some air. Just enough to blend it like that. I'm a, I want another cloud in our world. And he's going to live right down here. Do one cloud at a time, though. Don't get greedy. I know it starts working and you say, well, I'm just going to put in a whole, whole colony of clouds. Do one at a time. There. Like that. We'll just let it float on the way. Clean brush. And once again, just sort of blend it a little bit. Just enough to bring it together. Like that. But isn't that a simple way of making some very effective little clouds? It works, and you can do it. You can do it. Yeah, all right. Now, I get to wash the brush one more time. One more time. All right. We wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Kick the bucket there. Okay. Now then, let's do a happy little mountain. We use some black, Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, and alizarin crimson. We just mix them together. That's black, blue, crimson, Van Dyke. All right. It will cut off a little roll of paint. See, it lives right out there on the edge of the knife. Let's go up in here. Got to make a decision. In our world, the mountain lives right there. Right there. There it comes. Just a, just a little mountain. He's got a little bump right there. Something like so. It doesn't matter. Mountains are so fantastic to paint. And it'll teach you to use the knife. And if you can use this knife, make friends with it. Shoot, you can do entire paintings with, with nothing but the knife. Two inch brush. We're going to grab that and pull it. Just pull it. Blend that color down. Because the canvas is wet, you can do that. It has a liquid white underneath. You can move color. It'll just slide right on there. If you were working on a dry canvas, we'd be in Agony City about now. But because it's wet, we can literally move that paint. We'll use some titanium white. We'll put a little touch of midnight black in it. Just to gray it a little bit. Maybe even at least a little touch of bright red. There. But don't overmix it. I want to leave it marbled. Once again, our little roll of paint lives right out there on the edge of the knife. Let's go up in here. And now we come in here. No pressure. No pressure at all. Just barely graze the canvas. Just let the knife float. Let it float. Just let it slide right down the canvas. There. Maybe over there. Yep, a little bit of light striking right over in there. You decide. That's what's so fantastic about painting. You make the big decisions. You can create any kind of illusion that you want. I'm using a little Prussian blue and white. Mix it together. And we'll make a little shadow color for a mountain. Blue and white. 
is good enough for what we're doing. As I say, we're just going to do a very simple little painting, a little roll of paint. Simple painting, it probably won't be any challenge at all for you. But I want to show you this background. When you do your painting, you can make it much more complicated. Here, we have limited time and a director with no sense of humor. So, we'll just do something simple. All right. Maybe we will put a little doodle right there just to break up that shape some. Then go back, put a little shadow in there. Shoot, that easy. We've got a little mountain. A little mountain that lives right there on our canvas. Nice, clean, dry, two-inch brush. It really needs to be dry now because you'll destroy your paint if it's not dry. Then blend upward. We're taking out the tap marks, sort of bringing everything together when we do that. Always following the angles that are in your mountain. Most important. See? There. Maybe we can just bring it on down a little bit further. There. See? Like that. That's all there is to it. Give it a little upward lift. Shoot, we're in business. That gives us a little mountain that looks like it's far away. We're not, we're not too worried about it today. Let's take, what do we use? Let's take Prussian blue, some midnight black. And I'm going to take titanium white. I want to make several different values of this. Going to make some little, some little foothills that live way back in the distance, little trees that are growing far, far away. So we'll put some white in there. About like that. Okay, let me clean off the old knife. Let's grab us a, uh, we'll use a number six fan brush today. Blue and black, little white, load a lot of color into the brush. And let's go right up in here and maybe, maybe, yeah. Some little evergreens, maybe. Maybe those are evergreens, I don't know what they are. Whatever they are, they live far away. You decide what they are in your world. You want it just dark enough so that it stands out from the background. That's all you're looking for. As light as you can get it, and it still make it stand out from the background. I think we'll put several layers. So be sure this is as light as you can get it, so we can get progressively darker as we move forward. Clean, dry, two-inch brush. A little mist down here at the base. Just tapping. I'll add at least a little bit of titanium white to that. I want to be a little more misty. Then lift upward, just enough to take out the tap mark, sort of bring everything together. There. As I say, we can put several little layers in here. Maybe there's another layer. Yeah, it is right there. There he is. You decide. Painting, painting offers freedom. On this canvas, you can move mountains. You can do anything on this canvas. Maybe I'll have a little reflection right there, so we just pull it down. Grab our old two-inch brush again, pull straight down, go across. Shoo, we got instant reflections. Take a little liquid white. I'm gonna put a little liquid white out here, pull it out very flat, like so, flat as I can get it, then cut across. See, so there's a little bit of paint right up on top of the knife. Then we can go back in here and figure out little water lines that live in here. There they come. There. Just a little indication. That's all we're looking for. Something about like that. There. All right. Now we can just continually move forward. Make it a little darker. Same color, just darker. I'm just taking a little of the dark and going right into the light with it. So each layer is just a little bit darker. This one, bravery test. Maybe comes all the way up here. All the way up there. There we go. I want to push those mountains so far back that they look like they're way back in the distance somewhere. Just hiding back here, having a good time. There we are. There they come. Maybe they come right on down. We don't know. Maybe down in here somewhere, push up, give it a little upward lift. All right. See how easy those little distant trees are to make? 
and you can make layer after layer after layer. It'll make your painting look very deep, very deep, have depth in it. A lot of depth. We take some of that same color. Let's pull it down. Make us a little, little reflection right there. Go across. Back to our liquid white. Guess better get some on the knife. There. Like so. And we'll just put in another little water line, Liz, like there. Now maybe, I tell you what, I'll tell you what. Let's have one more. <laughs> just one more. Go into a much darker color now. It's almost the pure color. Got a little white in it, but almost the pure dark we made. And with that, see how that stands out? Each layer, though, needs to get progressively darker as it comes toward you. That's what gives a landscape depth and distance. It's most important. It can be your best friend. There. Some little duders live out there. Once again, let's have a reflection. I like reflection so much. So much. And reflections are one of the nicest, easiest things to do in this technique. Now, as a traditional painter, it used to drive me crazy, but in here, you see how easy they are to do. All right, take a little more of the liquid white. We just put the indication of a little water line there and have something like so. All right. But doesn't that create a lot of depth in there? That easy. That easy. Now then, tell you what, I want to pull the contact paper off and show you what we have. Show you that gorgeous background that we made and how well it works. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? It makes a beautiful little painting when you do that. But you know me. Hmm. You know me. Shoot, I got, I got to get a little crazier. Let's take, let's take a little bit of black. With some Van Dyke brown, a little dark sand. We'll just mix them all together on the brush here. It will give you a real bravery test. I like big trees. If you've painted with me before, you know I do like big old trees. And here comes one. Maybe it comes off here and back down. I don't know, wherever you want it to go. Boy, there is a big tree. It goes all the way off the canvas. Monster tree. That's kind that'll chase you across the yard if you're not good. Yeah, there we are. Big old tree, strong tree. Okay, something like so. But look at this background. Isn't that fantastic what it looks like? It's one of the neatest things that we've come up with. As I say, I've mentioned it earlier in this show, try it in a multitude of colors. You just can't believe what you can make. My partner, Annette Kowalski, is gonna do some flowers on backgrounds like this. She paints gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. Well, you might have saw her in the last series. Little roll of paint, black and white. I can't wait to see flowers on this. I'm just gonna touch, just put a little highlight on this rascal. About like that. Something about like that. And we'll just put the indication of highlight. We don't wanna go into too much detail. Just to show you how it's done. Then set you loose on the whole world. Because once you learn this, you experience freedom. Canvas and paint, oh, what you can do with it. You can create any illusion that you want. Just literally any illusion. A little pure black on the other side here. And we'll just sort of bring them together a little bit. I want that tree to be very strong looking, tough old tree. There we are, just a big old tough tree. And we'll take our script liner brush, paint thinner. And we'll get quite a bit of paint thinner here. Put it right in the black, right in the black. Make this paint very thin, almost like ink again. Very thin. Now let's go up in here and let's put some limbs, some arms on our tree. See there? Now if you have trouble making that flow, all you need to do is add a little more paint thinner to your paint. There. Big old rascal, he just lives out here and has a good time. 
And when you're at home and have unlimited time, you can just put details, details, details in this. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. There, wherever. Okay, something about my cat. And we just let them go. Let them go. Some over in here. But I like paintings that have borders and then you break the borders. There. Since we've introduced the use of contact paper in painting, I think it's almost become a standard. I see artists all over the country doing that now. It just opens so many doors to the imagination. And that's what art's all about, is imagination. There. All right. We need something for that tree to sit on. He's just sort of hanging out there in air, which is all right, but we'll put some on. We'll use some brown, blue, black, a little sap green in there too. A little bit of, little bit of color on the brush. And let's go up in here. And we need to put, as I say, some ground here. Maybe there's a little bush lives right there. Just happy little bush. Maybe there's a couple of them. I don't know, wherever you want them. Something about like that, though. There. Take that same brush, dip it into a little bit of paint thinner to thin it, go right into the yellow, and we have instant green. A little yellow ochre, I'll hit some Indian yellow once in a while, and ever so often a little bit of bright red. There. And for that, let's just start making an indication of some happy little bushes that live down here. These are outside of the little little rectangle that we made there. There. Maybe there's some nice little grassy areas. See them? There they come. There they come. Wherever you want them. It's where they should be. There. Something about like that. All right. Take the knife. We'll take a little, little Van Dyke dark sienna. Maybe put the indication of a small amount of soil dirt down in here. Little brown and white, touch it, about like that. Come back. I'm dipping a brush into a small amount of paint thinner once again, just to make the paint a little bit thinner so it'll stick on top of here without any problem. As you know, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. There we are. See there? Something about like that. Isn't that fantastic? You can do a little painting that quick. All right. I'm going to get crazy. Got a minute left. Van Dyke Brown. Dark Sienna mixed together. You ready? Right here. Maybe, maybe just what remains of a piece of an old fence that used to live out here. But it's about gone. It's about gone. It's like me. It's had a hard, tough old life. Tired old fence. Maybe there's one more little post right there. Something like so. And a little rail still left there. And maybe even one there. I don't know. It's up to you. Dark sienna, a little white. To make a light brown, just touch. Let some of that just show a little bit. A little highlight here and there. A little on this one. And that little baby one there. Take a little bit of red. Put a little red on top. Just a little sparkler. Shoot, I think we got a finished painting. Gonna call that one done. We'll take a little paint thinner, a little bit of the bright red. Let's sign this little rascal. We'll sign him right down in here. About like that. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this one. And once again, give us a try. There's so many, many different things that you can do with this basic idea of a black canvas and liquid clear. Until next time, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. It's a fantastic day here, and I hope it is wherever you're at. Let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got done up here. I have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas, and I've just covered the entire canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white. The liquid white's there just to make it slick and wet, and it makes painting much easier. I thought maybe today we'd do a 
maybe a winter scene that's very warm and I think you'll like it. Let's start out with a little Indian yellow on the old two inch brush. Don't need much, just a small amount of the Indian yellow. Let me go right up in here. Sometimes winter scenes can be so cold that they, they're, almost, they're almost difficult to look at. So I thought, thought today we'd do a winter scene that's very warm, it's very pretty. It'll just sort of make you feel good. There, a little bit of the Indian yellow. Without even washing the brush, go right into some yellow ochre. A little bit of yellow ochre. And we just blend that using little X's, little crisscross strokes. But you don't even have to wash the brush. You can go right into the yellow ochre. No big deal. There. Shoot, that's working so good. I'll tell you what, tell you what. I'm going to go right into, once again, without washing the brush, a little bit of the bright red. We'll just have a firecracker of a sky up here. Beautiful sky. One that makes you feel good when you look at it. If you hang this in your room when you walk in, it'll absolutely warm up a room. There we are. And we all have rooms in our home that, that need to be warmed up. There. All right. Now, nah, maybe I'll wash the old brush finally. But already we've blended those colors together. And it's very pretty, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, and then the bright red. And now let's wash the brush. As you know, we wash our brushes in odorless paint thinner. And we'll shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That really is the fun part. Now then, I'm gonna go into a little bit of the, a little bit of the thalo blue. Just a small amount. And let's go right up here to the top. Still using the little crisscrosses, the little X strokes. We'll just put in the rest of the sky using the thalo blue. That easy. Something about like that. There. Then I'll wash the brush and come back and blend those together. All right. Well, while we have that blue in there, let's just go across the bottom. We're going to have a little snow. That'll just end up being some beautiful shadows in our snow. And it's a good way to wipe the excess paint out of your brush. Okay. And one more time, we'll wash the old brush. Really and truly, the, the brush washing is the most fun part of this. <laughs> and it's the way I get even with the crew for hassling me. All right. Now then, with a the clean dry brush. I just want to blend these areas together. About like that. And that's all we're looking for. All right. Now, today let's take a little fan brush. I'm using a number six fan brush. Sometimes it's, some people like to use a number three. It's a little smaller and some people feel a little more comfortable with it. It's up to you. Okay. Maybe in our world there's a happy little cloud just sort of floats around in the sky up here and has a good time. There, a little more color. There we are. See, just let it float around though. Clouds may be one of the freest things in nature. So just let them go. Let them have a good time in your world. All right. Now then, back to a two inch brush. And very gently, I'm just gonna blend that back edge out till it disappears right into nothing. Then we'll fluff the cloud. See there? Just sort of fluff it up. Fluff it up. All right. And it gives us an indication of a little cloud that's living far away. Tell you what. Shoot. Cloud needs a little friend. So we'll give him one. Lives right there. Just a happy little guy. In my world, everything is happy. So we have happy little clouds and happy trees. All right, there we go. And once again, I beat the brush just to knock any, any excess paint off of it so I don't have to go through the whole cleaning procedure. There. And if you just have a little paint on the tip, that way you can clean the brush without going through all the washing and splattering everybody. It just makes it a lot easier. There we are. Something about like that. And I just want the indication of some little happy clouds, as I say, far away. Don't want a lot of detail. All right, let's have some fun. Let's take, let's take, we'll use today some Prussian blue, a little bit of black, put a little crimson in it too. What the heck? Maybe a little more crimson and some white. 
notice I'm leaving part of it dark and putting white only on one side. That's so I can use the same color in a darker value later on. It's called lazy man's way of painting. Wipe the old knife off. And we'll use, shoot, we'll just use that same old brush, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna tap a little color right into the bristles of the two inch brush. Let's go up in here. Maybe in our world, yeah. Little Footy Hill lives way back here. There it comes. There. See, just sort of let it run across here, wherever you want it to go. All right. Then I'm gonna give it a small upward lift so it looks like the tops of little distant trees live far, far away. Far away. We don't even know where they live. Don't know that we care. Clean two inch brush. And I'm gonna tap the base of this to create the illusion of mist. Something about like that. There we go. I just want to soften the bottom edge. There. Because I want to put another layer in. Back to the, to the brush that had the dark color on it. Now I'm going back into the darkest part of that color. This is the darkest part. Still has a little white in it, but it's darker than what's up there already. Let's go back up here. And maybe there's another little foothill that lives right in here. Notice that little misty area that we put in there. That becomes the separator, becomes your best friend. Cherish it, take care of it. Take care of it, because it'll separate these two areas. Now I'm gonna lift up once again. Chickity, chickity, chickity. Gotta make those little noises. There. Something about like that. And one more time, I'm just trading brushes here. I'm going back to the clean one so I can so I can tap the base of this and create more of that misty area. Now, if you need it, you could actually take a little bit of titanium white paint on the brush and create more distinct mist. Today, we don't need it. But maybe when you're painting, you want a little lighter area than we have here. Just add a little titanium white to your brush, and you can do that. All right. But now, see, this one... The second one is darker than the first one, so it makes it look closer to you in the landscape. All right, let's have some fun. I'm gonna clean that up. Let's take some same color, Prussian blue, black, and alizarin crimson. We just mix them together once again. Okay, wipe off the old knife. Here we are. Now, today, let's get a fan brush, shoot. I wanna make the indication of some trees, that are living closer to us. So now this is pure color, has no white in it at all. These will be the closest, so I want them to be the darkest. And all we'll do is just tap downward. Just tap downward like that. Don't want too much detail, it's too far away. When you're painting things that are far away, the lack of detail helps create that illusion of distance. If you have too much detail when it's when it's far, far away, it'll bother your eye, even if you don't really understand why. I know, I know you've looked at paintings and you've said, hey, hey, something's wrong with that painting. Don't know what it is, but something's wrong with it. Sometimes it can be something as simple as that, and your mind tells you it just isn't right. So, there. You decide where they live in your world, wherever. Let's see, about there, that's good. Now then, we can take this brush and I'm just gonna lift it upward a little bit, just a little, sort of to smooth it together. I wanna leave these little light areas down at the base. I'll show you why in just a second, because I'm gonna put some snow underneath these. So I want those little areas to stay in there. If everything works just right, it'll look like mist and little tree trunks and all kinds of happy little things in there, okay. Let's wash the old brush again. <laughs> you figure it out. I just like to wash the brush. Shake it off. <laughs> and just beat the dough. I got two of them. Let's wash them both. We'll wash them both while we got it going. There. People have realized this brush beating is so much fun. I get letters from friends all over the country. They tell me they really don't want to paint. They just bought a brush and beat it to take out their hostilities and frustrations. And that's okay. Titanium white. 
I'm going to use the big brush. Load a lot of color into it like that. So often we avoid this big brush because it is big. It will do wonderful things. Watch, watch, watch. Maybe, watch, right there. Just make a decision. And we have snow in our world. That easy. Put a little more on there. I'm just adding some more white to my brush. There. Snow is one of the easiest things there is to paint. Look at there. But see that blue that we put on now shows through and it looks like shadows. Right back there in our world. Okay. Now then, I'll grab another, another little two inch brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of the, we'll use a little Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna, just mix together, something like so. And let's put a little tree back here. We'll just make it with a two inch brush. I'm just gonna tap in just a basic shape of a little tree. This be a good place for my little squirrel to live. You know, speaking of my little squirrel, I've got a new little baby squirrel. I want to, I want to show him to you. He's the cutest little devil you've ever seen. Watch him. Look at him. Isn't he something? He is so pretty. I call him Peapod Junior. If you've painted with me for a while, you know that Peapod was a little squirrel that I had for a long time who lived in my pocket. There. Isn't that the cutest little devil you've ever seen? If you're not careful, you can get attached to these little rascals, and I do. They're very, very special to me. And every year I raise several and then we turn them loose and normally they go out and, beating my brush there, they go out and just live in my yard and have a good time. And they're happy out there and we sort of maintain them. We, we turn them loose, but at the same time I keep food out there for them. I'm taking a little bit of white, a little bit of the bright red, just tapping the corner of the brush into it, just like that. Okay, let's go up in here. Now, I'm gonna use that just to put the indication of a few little highlights on this tree. Little snowy things. There. I don't want it to be too distinct. Just some indications. Wherever. But think about some basic shapes and forms in this. Don't just throw them on at random. It is important that they have a shape. Gives the tree personality. There. All right, maybe a little bit right in there. Something like that. Wherever in your world, you make these big decisions where all these little things live. It is totally and completely up to you. Just scrape in indication of a few little sticks and arms that live in a tree. Shoot, we're in business. Now then, let's see what we got going here. Prussian blue, black, a lizard crimson. Maybe my little Van Dyke in it, doesn't matter. As long as it's good and dark and has some blue in it. Clean off the knife. And let's see, we'll grab a, there's an old fan brush. I'm gonna load it full of this dark color. Just full of it. There we are. Maybe, maybe, you know me, I like trees. It's your bravery test, you ready? Let's come right up in here, right there. Just start by making a little touch on the canvas. Then use the corner of the brush, working back and forth, forth and back. There we are, see them? They live right here in your fan brush. All you gotta do is just sort of scare them out. Here he comes, there he comes. We'll just come right down in front of this tree. Because in your world, you can make these decisions and you can move them anywhere that you want. Shoot, I like that, I'm gonna have another tree. Load a little more paint. We'll have one right above this, right over the top. There, see? That easy, we got another little tree. We'll just take the knife, cut through here, make it look like there's a little trunk in there. There. Now then, I'm gonna wash my fan brush off a little bit. Fan brush isn't as much fun to wash as a two inch brush. You can have a lot of fun with a two inch brush and get even with anybody that's hassled you. Fan brush isn't much fun. I'm gonna take a little white, put a little liquid white in that too, just to thin it down. A little bit of thalo blue. Thalo blue, there. And we'll go up in here. And with that, 
And let's put a few highlights on this tree. I want to keep it pretty dark, but a few highlights. This is a blue spruce, it looks like to me. There we go. A few more little duders right in there. And off we go. All right. Now maybe let's grab a one inch brush. Okay, one inch brush. We'll go into a little phthalo blue in that dark color we had. It doesn't much matter. One little phthalo blue in it though. And right up in here, maybe there's a happy little bush lives right here. I don't know, it's up to you. You make the decision where you think all these little things would live in your world. About like that. And let's see, we'll grab another one inch brush. I have several of them going. I'll show you a little trick. I'll take some liquid white, put out here. There, let me grab some more of that. Some liquid white, I'll put, I'm gonna put a little bright red in it to make a nice pinkish color that is very, very thin though, very thin, okay? Now, we'll take our one inch brush and we dip it in the liquid white. Because as you know, our golden rule is a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Get a little touch of the phthalo blue. I'll be right back, I'm gonna grab a little more of the liquid white. I want it a little thinner. Pull the brush in one direction. Now right at the last here, I'm gonna take it over and take just the top through a little bit of that pink color we made, okay? Now when we put highlights on these little bushes, they'll have nice little pinky tops on them. And it just warms them up, makes them pretty. Sneaky, huh? There. That easy. That easy. You can do it. Just gives a little sparkle to your painting. If you want them all blue, that's okay too. It's up to you. Totally and completely up to you. Let's go back to an old two inch brush, put some white on it, and I'm gonna grab, and intentionally I'm grabbing a little bit of this dark color, and I wanna pull it. Pull it. There. See, and we'll, we'll change the angle of the snow right there, that easy just with using this big old brush. As I say, snow is very, very easy to paint when you're using brushes this big. Doesn't take but just a second. Shoot, you know me. <laughs> I want a little cabin right out here because this would be an ideal place to live. Let's take, scrape out the paint. By scraping the paint out, it does two things. It allows us to sort of lay out our basic shape, and secondly, it removes excess paint. Take a little Van Dyke Brown, paint the back eave, the front. Just about like that. There. See? But you're still not committed. You can change your mind. That's what's so great about this little dark sienna mixed in there too. There. Now we'll take a little white. A little bit of the brown, mix it together. Barely grazing the canvas, barely touching it. Just let it float right down there. Make it look like old wood. Now on the other side, not much light's gonna hit over there. I want it very dark, just, that's enough. Just enough to give a hint of color. While we have that dark on the knife, now we have a little door, that easy. And we can come back, make it look like an old slab building. Put some boards on it. Now, the most important part, we gotta put a roof on it. We, we don't want it to snow in on him. So we'll take a little of the titanium white, come right up in here. I like to sort of lay out the shape so I have a nice straight edge to work from there. And then when you pull it down, it's nice and straight. That easy. Over here on the other side, just a little snow, like that. Take a little touch of light color, sort of outline the door a little bit. There we are, and we're in business. Take our knife, we can do a cabinectomy. That means we just cut it off to however we want it. There we go. Now, back to our old brush, old two-inch brush that had the white on it. 
We can come down here and clean up the edges a little. About like that. Shoot, we're in business. Now, maybe a few little bushes growing around the edge here. Something about like so. Because he probably was like me. He didn't take care of his lawn very well, and it grew up. Come winter time, it's still there. Now then, come back in here, tap in a few little bushes. This is once again the liquid white, titanium white, just mixed together to thin the paint a little. It's the only thing you're doing, it's just thinning the paint a little bit so it'll stick right on the top of that. Now, all right, I like that side. Let's do the other side. Bravery test. Going to load it full of dark color. Right there. Let's have a big old tree that lives in our world. I like big trees. There they are. Now you could actually make these trees with a one inch brush, two inch brush, whatever. Up to you. I like the fan brush sometimes. When you want a little more detail, it does give you a little more detail. We'll create another one right there. Something about like that. Recently we took a trip to Japan and met all of our friends in Japan who were painting and we did a painting very similar to this and it went over so well people liked it. Some fantastic painters there. Fantastic. We have a whole group of instructors now in Japan that are that are literally spreading the joy from one end of Japan to the other. There. All right. How's that? Got three trees now. And once again, we can take the knife and just scrape in some indication of a few little trunks and things that live in there. All you're doing is scraping through the paint, letting the canvas show a little. Maybe there's a stick here. We don't know. All right. Back to our one inch brush. I want to change the angle here. So by I'll put in a bush or two right here, like that. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. Liquid white on the fan brush, back in to a little titanium white, a little phthalo blue. Okay, let's go back up in here. Now, they have to decide which tree's in the front. I think the big one is. So we'll put a little indication on the ones that are far behind first. Darker, darker, darker. Just turn the brush over, we use this one. There, just let it disappear, let it disappear. It gets darker toward the base. Now we can come in here. This tree is in the foreground, so we make it the predominant tree. This is the boss tree, there. All right. Now, dip our one inch brush into liquid white, a little bit of the phthalo blue. Once again, I'm going to take the tips through that little bit of pink. I like that little pink right on the edge. And we'll just drop that right in, something like so. See there? And we'll put in all kinds of little bushes where they live here. There. Back to old two-inch brush, put a little snow right in like that. There. Something about like that. And that easy, we got a happy little duder there. I'm gonna take a little liner brush, just a little bit of brown on it. I wanna put the indication right here. Doop, doop, little fence, it goes back off, like in there. There he goes, something like so. Shoot, I think with that, we got a finished painting. This is one I hope you'll try. I know you'll enjoy it. Until next time, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you a happy painting, and God bless my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today because today I thought I'd do a painting. It's just a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy it. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch canvas, double prime, pre-stretched. Today I've covered it with a very thin coat of just black gesso. Just covered the entire canvas and allowed that to dry completely. On top of the black gesso, then we've put a little bit of liquid clear. Let me say that again, a little bit. It takes very, very small amount to make it work. While the clear is still wet, then we've added a little bit of color to it. And today I've chosen Prussian blue, 
a little bit of sap green and a little bit of Van Dyke brown just covered the entire canvas and that's still wet. So that allow us to do some fantastic things that I think you'll enjoy. I start off with a, we'll use a little fan brush, a little bit of titanium white, just a little, little color right onto the brush. There we are. And let's go up here and just, let's just have some fun. This is a day you can just be crazy. Just spin things around, let them just dance and play and la la la. See, there you go. No big deal. Just enjoy, just enjoy. Just spin it, make all kind of little shapes and designs, whatever you want. There, just dance it in, like so. Just very loose and free. Let it happen, let it happen, because we don't care. We, we don't make mistakes, as you know. All we do is have happy accidents in our world. So the worst thing can happen here is wonderful. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oils are so forgiving that we really don't worry about mistakes. Maybe a little bit over in here too. What the heck? It's your world, so you decide. And you can decide how bright you want this or, or how dark. It doesn't matter. Any way that you want it. Any old way. There. Okay, let me grab a two-inch brush. There we go. Make sure it's good and dry. With the old two-inch brush, I'm just going to take the corner of it and very gently just begin sort of winding this up. Just blending it a little bit. I don't want to lose all those little shapes, but we just sort of want to blend it together. About like that. That's really about all we're looking for. Just, we're just making a little background. It'll end up being far, far away. Turn it a little bit to one direction and then then maybe a little bit to the other direction. It doesn't matter. There. This is, as I say, just going to be background material. I tell you what, I'm going to do a big forest today. I think I'll do that. And this will end up just being some shapes that are shining through the trees far, far away. Okay, and that's about all I want today. All right, let's have some fun already. Let's take, we'll use that same brush. What the heck? We'll go into a little Prussian blue. Oh, pick up a little bit of black. Maybe even a little brown. I like it. I'm going to get some crimson, too. I like it, too. There. Maybe a little more crimson. Now then. But notice we're just tapping. Just tapping one corner, basically, right into the paint. Let's go up in here. Now then. Maybe there's some indications of some trees that live far, far away back here. We'll just use the old two-inch brush. And just begin tapping in some basic shapes. Oh, that's all we're looking for. Don't, don't worry about a lot of detail here. We really don't care. All we're looking for is just basic shapes. Something about like so. There. Just sort of let it happen. All right. And over in here, we don't. We'll just drop it in. And I'm gonna add the least little bit of titanium white to my color just so it stands out against the dark. You know, you need dark to show light and light to show dark. It's just like in life. You need a little sorrow in your life so you know when the good times happen. There. All right. I'm ready for a good time right now, though. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit of the titanium white. This is just basically titanium white. And let's pick out a few little things that will separate and make them a little different like there's trees in front, some behind. It still looks bluish, but it has a little touch of titanium white in it, just as a little separator. There, see? Looks like layers and layers and layers of little trees far away. There we go. And just by doing this, you can create many, many layers of trees. We're gonna have a forest, we need a lot of trees. Shoot, all my little friends have to have a little place to live out here. All right. Shoot, we about got this painting finished already. I'm taking it just a second. And using these big old two inch brushes, you can really, you can cover some space very quickly. And you can do some detail that people will think that you've, that you've spent forever with a little one haired brush and just worked yourself to death. Shh, it's our secret. Let's take a little white, a little dark sienna. Put a little Van Dyke in there too, I'm darkening it more. That's better. Maybe 
a little roll of paint lives right out on the edge of the knife. See there? So right out on the very tippy end of the knife. Then we can go up here and just here and there and there and here. I just want to put the indication that maybe there's a few little tree trunks that you can see. I don't want many, just a few. They sort of hide back in here and that's really enough. And then very lightly, we can sort of blend those right into the painting. Three hairs and some air, just barely touching. See, it sort of pushes them back, but it gives you the indication that maybe there's some tree trunks for those little trees back in there. Okay, let's mix up some dark color. Let's take, all right, there we go. Good, we'll use Prussian blue, some midnight black, Van Dyke brown, what the heck, crimson and sap green, all your dark colors, just throw them in there. Really doesn't matter. We're looking for a dark color that has both blue and green in it. Other than that, no big deal. Let me wipe the old knife here. We just wipe the knife on a paper towel, keep it clean. And let me get a clean brush out and sort of dirty. I want this to be very dark. We use another two inch brush. Tap a little color right into the bristles. So you just give it a little push. Boop, 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 like that. All right, let's go right up in here. We have to start making some major decisions in our world. I want some big trees. I mean big, big trees. So, okay. I know this is scary. Jump up here in the middle of your painting and decide that there's gonna be a big tree that lives right there. There he comes. Use the corner of the brush, just the corner. Just the corner and let it go. La, 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 there you are. See, see, there you go, wherever. And all we're doing is putting in some dark background so our light color will show. We're gonna come back, we're gonna put some leaves on all these trees, some nice greenery. But we have to have the dark in order for the light to show. There. See there, there goes all you little trees you worked so hard for. But they're still there, we know they're back here. Shoot, that's working so good. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I know. You say, eh, Bob, you've done it this time. Maybe so. But just drop it in. Don't worry about it. As you know, we, we don't make any mistakes here, so we don't care about it. We really don't worry. You know, painting, painting should be fun. It should be something that makes you just enjoy life. And one thing that painting will do for you, I get letters every day that attest to this. Painting will make you see nature. People write and they tell me there's been a tree living in my front yard for 20 years and I never saw it, never saw it until I started painting. And I went out the other day and I made friends with the old tree in the yard and I understand him now. I see color, I see shape, I see, I see why he's so special in God's world. And painting can open these doors for you. If I keep a yak in here and a painting, we're not gonna have anything left of our background trees. There. But as long as you have the practice of making them, that's really all that counts. Because if you can make one tree, you can make a million trees. Okay, now we got some dark color in there. Let's have some fun now. Yeah, there's a fan brush. It's got a little white on it. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put brown. Just Van Dyke brown on one side and white on the other. See, it's dark on one side, light on the other. Okay, now then, let's see our light's coming right through here and hitting all these trees. Keep our dark side over there and we can make a tree trunk and make both sides at one time. Dark and light. A Little more of the dark, a little more of the light. You decide where they live. There's another one. There's another one. Let's go over on the other side here. Add a little touch of paint thinner to my brush. Thin the paint just a little so it'll slide off there easier. Over here, there's one. Just let it, let it go. A little more color. We don't know. Sometimes you just see indications, little parts of some that are hiding way back in there. You decide later where they are and where they live. Well, we'll take this brush here. Yeah, that's okay. We'll just use it anyway. It's dirty, 
But if we go right into the yellow, since it has blue and black in it, it'll make a beautiful green color. See? That easy. Get a little yellow ochre. We'll add a little Indian yellow. And, and every so often, I'm going to touch a little of this bright red. I know. You say, why are you hitting red? Because red and green are opposites, and it will dull the green. All right. Push, though. You see that little ridge right there? We're trying to get one just like it on the end of the brush. See it? Beautiful close-up shot there. Going to have to give Kathy a raise. There we are. Okay, let's go up in here. Now then, let's begin finding our individual trees. Just use the corner of the brush and begin picking them out. Just use the corner of the brush. Load a little more color. Don't be afraid to, to load some paint on your brush. There we go. Just drop them in. Think about basic shape, basic form, and off you go. Off you go. You should only be limited here by your imagination, because your imagination can take you to any world that you want to go to. And with a little practice, you can create any illusion that your heart desires, at least on the piece of canvas. There. I go home and try that and get in big trouble, but here I can do anything that I want. Any old thing. It's my world. Take a little sap green, add right in there. I'm going to put the least little bit of paint thinner on the brush. Remember our golden rule. A thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So I've thinned this just enough to make it a little bit thinner than what's up on the canvas. That's what we're looking for. Let's go up in here. And here comes this old rascal. There it is. There it is. See him? Just drop them in. But once again, I know you get tired of hearing it, but it's important. Think about shape and form. Don't just don't just get carried away and drop them in. I know it, it gets feeling good and you don't you don't want to stop. And off you go. But take your time. Take your time. You have no time restraints hardly at home. You can just play and have a good time. There. See, I want it to get darker and less and less. That's a little quiet area back here. Okay, let's go over on the other side. That tree, that tree over here, said he didn't want to be left out. He was talking to me. I'm not going to leave him out. We'll put a little, little bit of greenery on him, too. Now, we said our light was coming through right through there. So add more over on this side than you do the other side. So it gives that impression of a roundness for the tree. There we go. Mm. Isn't that a neat way of making a lot of leaves on trees very easily? Now, if the two-inch brush intimidates you, and it does at first, when you first start painting, that's a big brush. It looks just like what you painted the barn with last week. If it intimidates you when you first start, use a one-inch brush. It'll work just as well. It's just slower. Just takes a little longer. There, that's all. But either one of the brushes will work, and you can make just gorgeous foliage. It's really unbelievable what you can make with it. There. I'm going to add a little bit more paint, and maybe, yeah. We'll put the indication of something right along in here that it just hangs right over this old tree. What the heck? We can have it anywhere we want it here. Maybe. I'm going to add more yellow. I'm going to put a little bit of liquid white on my brush. I want to do two things. I want to thin the color, of course, to make it a little thinner, but I want to lighten it. I want to lighten it in value. All right. Maybe. Yeah, you're right. Maybe there's a happy little bush that lives right here. See? There we go. Try to leave a dark area. See, there's a dark between these two. That dark is your separator. It's your best friend. Take care of it. Take care of it. I'm going to go a little heavier into the yellow ochre and maybe even a little more of the bright red. Let's put a little sparkler right in there. Yeah, there he is. There he is. Sometimes I get crazy and I give, I give all these little bushes and trees names and talk to them. That's okay. People look at you like you're a little strange, but painters, painters are allowed to be a little different. We're sort of expected to be a little weird. And that's okay. Painters, I think, have more fun than most people. 
so it's all right. Life's too short not to enjoy it. There. All right. Wow, all these places and big trees. You know, my little squirrel would have a ball here. I showed a showed a little bit of my little squirrel last time, and I want to show you again. I think we got a little bit of footage here. He's one of the cutest little devils you've ever seen. Little baby gray squirrel. And I've been raising him since he was, oh gosh, he was a tiny little rascal. Looked like a little rat when I first got him. But he's doing wonderful now. In fact, by the time you see this, he'll probably be living out in the yard with, with his namesake. We call this little squirrel Peapod Jr. And he'll probably be living out in the yard with him. Isn't that something? It's hard to get them to eat, as you can see. Little rascals or something else. There. I'm just putting in a few more little bushes while you're watching my little baby there. At this stage, he's mm, probably about 45, 50 days old, maybe. And I'm guessing, because when I got him, his eyes were already open. He'd fell out of a tree, and a very nice lady brought him to me and asked me if I would take care of him until he got big enough to release him. Yeah, you know me, I got a soft, soft place in my heart for these little rascals. I just can't, I can't say no. I would, <laughs> I'd be like one of these bird ladies like that I work with so often. I'd have a whole house full of animals if I could. All right. I didn't do anything while, while I was gone there that you don't know how to do. I just put in some more little bushes and trees. We need a little land back here. I'm gonna take, what am I gonna take? We'll take some white, little Van Dyke, little dark sienna. We'll mix them together. Maybe I can put the, at least a little touch of crimson in there. Ooh, I like that. Don't overmix your color. Leave it sort of marbled. Cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go up in here. And maybe there's a little path. Got to have a place to walk in the woods here. Gosh, this is going to be such a beautiful little spot. I'd have to come out here and talk to Peapod and see how he's doing. Yeah, there. Because I'd worry about him. Even if he was out here in the tree having a good time, I'd worry about him. I'm like old mother hen with my animals. There. But see, that's still picking up that color. It's underneath, and it sort of bleeds through. Hope you can see that okay. There. Makes it look like a little path, but I want it to stay, I want it to stay dark, because this is deep in the woods. This is one of them quiet, sneaky little places. There. Not many people come here. Not too many people come here. This is, this is where the little animals live. Let a little light just zing right down the path. Just enough. There. All right. All right. Let me go back to my bush brush, the brush I was making the bushes with. And let's come right along in here and just bring a few of them little rascals right out over the path. See, there they come. There they come. We'll have one right out through here. But do one bush at a time. Just one little rascal at a time. A little more of the Indian yellow. Pop one in. Right there. Just sort of decide where these things live in your world and put them in. There we are. Something like so. Now yeah, then let's take our liner brush. We'll use a little brown, a little white, and I put paint thinner with it to make it very thin. Turn the brush, that brings it to a nice sharp point. And we'll go up in here, and here, and there, and there, and here. We'll just put the indication of a few little sticks and twigs and little things that we need in there just to hold the bushes up. Put them mostly in the dark areas, though. That's where you'd see them. A few over on this side. Don't want them left out. There we are. You decide. Maybe some. Maybe here's one that's quite dark, because it's got a lighter background, so it'll show up. You have to make those big decisions. Speaking of big decisions, we got a minute left here. <laughs> okay. You ready? <laughs> if you've painted with me before, you know what's coming, don't you? We got a minute or so left here. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, yeah. Okay, you ready? This is your bravery test big time. Right here. Is a big tree. I mean a big tree. 
This is your bravery test. Let's give him a little friend that lives right along in here. Just let it come right on down, like so. I'm using mostly just black, midnight black. There. Let's see, quite a bit of paint on there. There we are. Boy, that is two monster trees. But that's what makes it fun. Be brave. Take a chance. I get letters sometimes from people and they say, why'd you put that big tree in there? I liked it so much better. When you paint yours, leave out the old big tree if you don't want it. I just want to show you as many things as I can show you in the time that we have here. Just to get you excited about it and turn you loose on the world. There, let's take a little white, a little Prussian blue, a little black. Mix them together, but I want to leave them marbled. A little roll of paint. Now, barely, 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 barely touching. Just like you're putting snow on the mountain. Just let it zip right on down the side of this tree. But just barely touch it. Barely touch it. Don't get greedy. I know it gets good. You want to do it too much? There. A little bit on this one so he's not left out. Just a big old tree. A little bit of black and put right there so we can determine that this big tree maybe is in the front of the little one. It's the way them big guys are, isn't it? Always want to be out in the front. There. And you can just sort of play the black and the light color back and forth. Now, if you let this paint build up, when this is dry, it will actually feel like real bark. And take a paint thinner on the liner brush. There we are. I want to make some very thin paint. And we'll just draw a limb or two on here. Now, this old tree is so big, maybe all of its greenery is way up high. But down here, there's a couple of old dead limbs that are still hanging around. There they are. See them? Just to add paint thinner. If you have trouble making it flow, just add a little bit more of the paint thinner. Hey, here's one. Here's one. It's coming from we don't know where. We don't even know. Don't care. We just know it's up here somewhere. Just coming down. Here comes one. It goes behind that one. There. Wherever. Oops, there's one that broke off, see? And you have those in nature. Absolutely have them. We can take a little bit of our light color, and we can add just the indication of a little highlight right up in there like that. Shoot. We can just here and there add a stick or a twig. A couple over here. Back to my little bush brush. And I'll put just an indication of some little bushes that are growing up around his foot. Something about like that. Just a, it pushes it back into the painting. And then let's take a little bit of the bright red, a little paint thinner, and I think we'll sign this little painting. Really hope you've enjoyed this. It's a very simple little painting. It'll teach you how to use all the equipment, and most important, most important, It'll bring a lot of joy to your heart. If you have time, after you paint, take a little picture and send us. We'd love to see it here. And every so often we put them together on a board and we like to show you what everybody's doing around the country. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. Today I thought we'd do a little winter scene that's just a lot of fun. So let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've gotten done already. I have my standard old canvas up here, but today I've taken a mixture of liquid clear and liquid white, both, both of them, and covered the entire canvas. And it's very wet and slick and all ready to go, so I thought today we'd just have some fun. I want to start out today first thing and make some brown. I'm going to use some sap green and a alizarin crimson in about equal proportions. I sort of, I sort of like it to the reddish side, but you make your own decision. There we are. This makes a beautiful, beautiful brown. Something about like that. Okay, let me wipe off the old knife. As I say, I thought today we'd just, we'd just have some fun. Let's just do something that's a little bit crazy. 
I'm going to take a old two inch brush and go right into some of that nice brown color that we made. And this one's a hard one to do. Ready? How about something like that? Just drop in a little bit of color here and there and there and here. I'm going to go into dark sienna. It's a little bit different in color. Just to change the flavor a little bit. And, okay, a little Van Dyke Brown. What the heck? We just put some streaks on here. Maybe over on the other side. Let's go right about there. And I'm just, just putting in some browns. I want a very warm, warm painting. And this is going to end up being just some little background colors. Now then, I'm going to wash the old brush. And as you know, we wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Since these are oils, you need paint thinner to get the paint off your brush. You're not supposed to hit the bucket though, like I did. <laughs> I'm just shaking it in a trash can there. Take a little bit of titanium white now on the brush. Same old two inch brush. And let's go back up in here. And I'm just gonna begin taking a little of that white and just allowing it to blend together. I just want to make a very warm little background. So in between these colors, I'm just going to add a little white here and there and there and here and let them blend. About like that. Really don't worry about it. There, there is no right or wrong here. It's just if it makes you happy and you enjoy it. There we are. See? And that's really about all I'm going to do for the little background. I don't like that. Shoot, well, we got the old brush going. We can, we can put a little down here. I'm going to have a little winter scene that's very warm. Very, very warm. So this brown will be our shadow color because it's a very warm color. How's that? And we can wash the brush again. Actually, I just look for excuses to wash the brush. There we go. Shake it off. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. All right, maybe in the back here in the background somewhere, we'll take a little of that brown we've made, grab a little white too. It's paint thinner. Quite a bit of paint thinner. And I want to make this very thin, almost like ink, but not quite. There, turn the bristles in there. See, it brings it to a very sharp point. All right, let's go up in here. Now then, back in here, I just want to begin putting the indication of some happy little trees that live far, far away. There, so these are just little background trees, so it don't much matter. There we are. And you can put as much detail on yours as you want. There, little limbs and sticks and twigs. Maybe, yep, there you're right. He's got a friend right there. You know me, I think even a tree needs a friend. There, a little more of the, little more of the color. There. Once again, these are just going to be little background trees, so we're not too concerned about them at this point. Not too concerned. There. Maybe, 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 yeah, right in here. Right. Something like so. This is a good, good painting to give you some practice making little tree limbs. All the little things that it, that sometimes give you give you a little problem to you practice a little. All right. There's one. Okay. Just a little indications. We'll go on the other side over here. A little more paint thinner. We don't want this side left out, so we'll put in a few over here too. See, if you have enough paint thinner, this will just slide. Now you want to be careful when you're putting the liquid mediums on the back, not to get too much of the clear. Not too much of the clear. I want a little bit on there because I want it to have some translucence, but not too much. There. Just all kinds of little doers that live in there. Back in the woods, this is where all the little squirrels and the rabbits hide. A little more of the paint thinner. And we'll put, oh, there's an old gnarly one right there. Maybe 
Maybe something stepped on him when he was just a little baby. Put a little uh, in him. That happens sometimes. Yeah, all trees aren't straight. All of them aren't future telephone poles. Some have personalities that are just wonderful. Just like people. Some tall, some short, some heavy, some real skinny. Trees are the same way. They're individuals. Look at there. There's one that went right off the canvas. All right. Now, sometimes it's fun, and if you have just enough liquid clear on there, you can take just paint thinner on a fan brush and flick it a little bit, and it'll make the indication, and it takes a while for this to work, but you'll begin seeing little places where the paint thinner begins eating through the liquid clear, and it'll look like little tiny leaves and stuff on your trees. There. And it'll take, sometimes it takes upward 10 minutes or so for it for it works. And we'll just splash a little right around in here. Before the painting's over, you'll begin to see some of it. Now the more clear you put in your background, the more of this that'll happen. But it'll look like little, little things that are happening back in the distance. It's really neat. There. It's about like it. Now let's grab, tell you what, I like this little two-inch brush. Let's use it. We'll put a little white on it, and I'm going to go right into that brown we made out of a lizard crimson and sap green. A little white just to, just to make it a little bit brighter. We're just tapping one corner in there. Okay, let's go back in here, and maybe there's some little background bushes that live in here. Just take the brush, and we're just tapping with the top corner of the brush. Just the top corner. And we'll begin putting in basic shape. We're not looking for detail, only basic shape. Don't worry about it. There is no right or no wrong here. There. It's just little background things. Something like so. And you decide. This is where you have to make all these big decisions. Where does all these little things live in your world? There they go. Wherever you'd like them. Something about my cat. Now, let's get crazy today. In here, tell you what, I'll go into a little bit of the yellow ochre, and I'll sort of vary back and forth between the yellow ochre, cad yellow, Indian yellow, and once in a while, a little touch of the bright red. Huh? I want to warm this up even more. We'll use the same old brush. And you just go right up in here, and just begin tapping on the indication of a few little highlights. Don't want too many. Don't want too many. Just enough to get them to come out a little. There. Something about like that. But think about, think about form, think about shape. Don't just throw them on at random. I say that in nearly every painting, but it's so important. So important. So many little things like this. That's what will make your paintings very, very special. Very special. You know, I know nobody's interested in that big old happy book, but if you're ever out selling paintings, it's these little details that make your painting special, makes them stand out from the crowd. There we are. All right, something about like that. But see, it just really puts a lot of detail back in there. And you see this sometime in winter. I lived in Alaska for about a dozen years, and a lot of times, in fact, I've seen it snow when, when everything was still green. We'd get some unexpected snows and it would be so weird looking because you'd have all the green trees and bushes and everything and snow laying around. But you, a lot of times you have this brownish stuff with snow on the ground and it's gorgeous. It makes a beautiful, beautiful painting. Titanium white, old two inch brush. And you just decide, where the snow is laying here and drop it in. That easy. That easy. Just pay attention to the lay of the land, the way the snow flows, the direction. I like that. There we go. Got a hair there. We'll just throw him right off. Sometimes it, these brushes, these are natural bristle brushes, and sometimes the hair sort of sneaks out. It's like mine, it's a little wild at times. 
there. If you remember a couple of years ago, we had John Tam on the show. I asked him if he'd do a portrait of me, and he said, no, nah, it was too easy. All he had to do was paint a steel wool ball and put a smile on it. So we, we didn't invite him back. Yeah, we did. <laughs> All right. Now maybe right down in here, we'll just take a little bit of black, a little bit of, little bit of Prussian blue in it. Not much, just a little, mostly black. Mostly black. I'm gonna pull it straight down. I decided maybe there would be a little water in there. Something about like it. You just decide where it's at. Pull it down, let it go right across. Isn't that easy? It'll make the indication of some water. Maybe I'll add a little brown to that. It's too blue. Yeah, I like that much better. See how you can change your mind? That easy. In your world, you can change it any way that you want it. And I like that much better. It fits more in the painting now. All right. Back to our titanium white. Bring that right down. Sort of smooth out the edges a little. And we're in business. Okay. Tell you what, I'm just going back and forth between several of the old two inch brushes. I'm going to take a little Van Dyke brown, a little dark sienna, mix them together. I want this to be pretty dark. Maybe we got some more big bushes that live. I do now, right here. Right there. There they are. You decide where they live in your world and just drop them in. Something about like that. There we go. Maybe, shoot, maybe it comes all the way down in here. I don't know. Doesn't much matter. You can put them anywhere that you want them. white on the brush does two things it makes the color a little bit lighter in value and it makes it thinner because a thin paint as you know will stick to a thick paint thin to thick tap a little on there and let's go in here and, and we'll just pick out indication here and there of a little bush that lives in here something about like so there we are maybe a little bit of the bright red Indian yellow. Ooh, that's a nice one. But leave some of those dark ones in there. See, it creates shadows and depths in your painting. Don't, don't kill them all. Sometimes it's almost hard to stop. Just, but it should make you happy when you paint. Just sing a little song, go along in there. There. Wherever. Back to our little two inch brush that has titanium white on it and we're just pulling it right through the white. It's no big deal. Just load a little color on it. Let me go right up in here. Maybe there's a little, maybe there's a little peninsula lives right here. Looks like a natural place for one. So just pull it out. Intentionally pick up a little of that brown. It ends up being beautiful shadows in your painting. Beautiful little shadows. There we go. Shoot, who knows, maybe it just sort of comes around like it. We don't know where it goes. Just let it disappear right on out in here. About like that. And you can push upward and make it look like little bushies or lift upward. Either way, it works in both ways. Smooth it out. All right. We can take a knife, just, just a clean knife, and you can go back in here and scrape through and let let the canvas show through and it makes it look like little sticks and twigs and just all kinds of little duders that live in there. And it also helps create that illusion of depth and distance in your painting. There, there's one back here too. Okay, ready to get crazy? <laughs> you know me. I like big trees. I'm gonna go right into some black. Midnight Black and Van Dyke Brown. Just mix them together on the brush, it doesn't matter. I want some big trees in our world. 
Okay, this is your bravery test. A lot of paint. Right there. Big old tree lives there. Maybe, I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you, uh, maybe, yeah, let's have a whole family of trees there. Mama, Papa, maybe a couple little kids that are about grown. There, something about like so. Maybe, tell you what, tell you what, I'm gonna put one over here too. Smaller one. It's farther away, so he'll look smaller. Maybe these are birch trees. I just made a decision. Take some titanium white, pull it out very flat, then cut across and get a little roll of paint. I don't know if you can see that. Let me do it again. Pull that flat, cut across, see the little roll of paint. That's exactly what we need. Now we can go up in here, touch the canvas, and give it sort of a little round pull. By that I mean I'm exaggerating, going around like that. Something about like that. Just touch. Give it a little pull. There. But no pressure. Absolutely. It's like you're putting snow on the mountain. If you've painted with me before and did mountains, it's just like you're putting snow on the mountains. There. We'll work down on this one. It doesn't matter. You can work up, work down. Whichever way. There we are. Little on this one. Don't want him left out. About like that. Now we'll come around, put a little bit on the other side. Them little noises really do help. Really do help. I got a letter from a psychiatrist one time. He said he didn't know about me. But he, he said he enjoyed the show anyway. There. <laughs> so I guess everybody's happy. Just a few little doers. And we can go back to our dark color. That was a little bit of black, Van Dyke brown. And I like to I like to have birch trees that really, when they're dry, you can touch and it feels like birch bark. So I really add a lot, make it thick. But that's up to you. You can make them very thin or you can make them thick. It's one of the things that I like so much about oil paint is that you can build it up very, very thick can make some gorgeous effects with it. There. See? But look at that. Isn't that a super way of making some gorgeous little birch trees? And they're easy. Don't want to forget him. Start with a little bit of the white. Something about like so. Little touch. And we'll even put a little dark in that one. We don't want it left out. But this one's going to be farther away, so you won't see quite as much detail. You don't have to worry about it. Now then, get a little paint thinner up here. And we'll take a script liner brush. Oh, number two script liner brush. I'm going to use that same color, black, Van Dyke brown. Thin paint. Let's go up in here. And let's put some arms on our trees. Here they come. Just as many or as few as you want. Just drop them in. And arms on the tree, they just sort of grow wherever they feel like. There. And you can put all kinds of little doers. It's winter time and the leaves have fell off these birch trees. They're resting, but come springtime, they'll be back. They'll be back. They just taken life easy for a few days. On vacation. Went to Florida. There. Yeah. A little more of the paint thinner. And you just, once again, you put as many as you want in your world. And wherever you want them to live. Because that's exactly where they should be. Each and every one of us will see nature through different eyes. And you should paint what you see and what you feel. That's what makes painting so special. It's as unique as the people who do it. There we are. And anybody can paint. There's no big secret to it. You do not have to know Michelangelo on a first name basis. You can paint. You really can. Mm. All right. Let's have some fun. I think in our world, we got a minute or so left here, so we'll play a little bit. 
Let's take, let's take, I need a dark color. Good dark color, Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, black, and crimson. Mix them together. I think in our world today, let's have one little evergreen tree, <laughs> just to break it up. One little happy evergreen tree. A lot of color on the fan brush. Where does he live? Yep, got to do it right there. Just drop him in, and we'll take take the old fan brush. There he is, see? We just drop him in like that. Got to make a decision, though. How tall is he? Where is his little bottom going to be? Maybe there. Looks like a good place. Good place right there. Yes, there we are. Brush has got titanium white. And I want to grab the bottom here and pull it. Allow a little of that color to be picked up. Something about like so. There. Just let that disappear right on out there somewhere. We don't know where it goes. Don't know that we even care. Put the indication of a little trunk in there. Hmm. Grab another fan brush. Put a little liquid white on it. A little titanium white. Use thalo blue today. Let's put some highlights on that little evergreen. We'll make him stand out in this painting. Oh my gosh, isn't that gorgeous? Little tree just lives right here. What a scene to live in. What a place. A few little doers that live in here. Just little sticks and twigs and things that grow along there. Back to our brush with a, the white on it. And off we go. Now let's take a little bit more of the brown. This is just Van Dyke brown. And let's go right along in here. We'll just tap in a few little gooders that live in there. Back into our liquid white. A little bit of the yellows and the ochres and whatever. Put a few little highlights on some of these. There. A little more of the Indian yellow. About like that. Then we can take a little white, decide where you want it to end, and just sort of clean it up. That's really all there is to it. But isn't that a fun little painting? It's one that you can do basically with no problem, and I think you'll enjoy it. And as I mentioned on some of the other shows, if you do some of these little paintings and you have time, take a picture and send us. We'd love to see them. Take a little red, and we'll sign this little rascal, call it done. Really hope you've enjoyed it. There. And with that, from all of us here, we'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. Thought today we'd do a little painting. It's very easy and you'll think you'll enjoy it. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. Today I have my regular old 18 by 24 inch double prime pre-stretch canvas and I've just covered it with a very very thin coat of liquid white so it's all wet and slick and it's ready to go so I thought we'd just do a let's just do a painting it's nice and one that'll make you feel good take a little thalo blue to start with on the old two inch brush there we go just tap a little color right into the bristles and we'll go right up in here and let's just begin dancing in just a happy little sky. Now because the liquid white's on the canvas, the blue is mixing with it and automatically it'll blend together. If this was a dry canvas, whew, it'd be difficult to do this. But since it's wet, this happens almost automatically. Maybe we'll just come right down like so. I'm sort of leaving a spot open. I think I'll have a happy little cloud up in there. One that just floats around and has a good time all day. So we'll just leave a little place for him to live. All right. Something about like that. Maybe a little more of the blue. Yeah, what the heck, we'll have another one in here. 
just sort of make a decision and drop it in. Drop it in. This is probably one of the freest forms of painting that I've ever seen. There. Because we don't do any drawing, no sketching. We just sort of start out with an idea in our mind. And off we go. And you can do this. Just the same. All right, maybe I'll have a little water in this one. I like water. So while I have that blue on the brush, let's just go right down here and put in a little bit of water. This will be still water today. Still water is always level. Always level. So try to keep your strokes as straight as possible. Because if you're not straight, it'll look like your water's running up or downhill. And it's, it'll sort of disturb your eye. We don't want that. We want it to look right. Here we go. Now then, I'm going to take the same brush and go into a little bit of the midnight black. I just want to here and there just darken it a little bit, like right there. Just a little, a little tiny bit. And maybe, maybe, maybe right in here. Just a little, just to change the flavor in a couple of places. All right. A little bit more in the water and we'll be in business. Okay. Notice we've left a little light area in here. If everything works just right, it'll look, it'll look like a sheen of light coming across the water. A little shimmer. Okay, now then, let's wash the brush. Let's wash the old brush. There's a screen in the bottom of the bucket that we scrub the brush against. That screen allows the solid material to settle to the bottom. And that way your, your paint thinner remains relatively clean. And you can use it over and over. You just let it settle and off you go. Go right into titanium white with the old two inch brush. We'll just use it, it doesn't matter. Okay, but notice mainly one corner. It's got a lot of paint. The other corner is just about naked. Let's go right up in here. Uh, take that corner, it has a lot of paint in it. And I'm just, I'm just gonna tap in a basic little cloud shape. We're really not too concerned. Just a little basic shape, happy little cloud that floats around here in the sky. There we are. Now, then. now I've got several of each brush going here. So I'm gonna get a nice dry two inch brush and I'm gonna tap the base, the back of the cloud there till it disappears. And then very lightly, very lightly, three hairs and some air, just very lightly blend over that. And that quick, we got a happy little cloud just floating around there. I'm gonna do the same thing one more time. And in our world, maybe, maybe there's a little cloud that hangs around here. Clouds just sort of, they sort of hang out, have a good time. Now, you see the reason I put the dark in is so that light looks brighter. That little bit of black that we added darkened the color enough so the white now looks much brighter than it would have. In order, in order to show light, you need dark. Dark is what makes, it's what makes white show, or light color, period. It doesn't have to be white, it could be any color that's light. But you need that dark contrast to make it jump out and, and sing for you. Otherwise, it'll just sort of go away and leave you standing there by yourself. Once again, good dry two inch brush, clean. Well, relatively clean. And then we'll fluff this up. Just fluff it, fluff it, fluff it. There sort of the way I take care of my hair. I just grab it and lift it, and tease it a little bit, and off we go. There we are. See, now we have another layer of clouds. That's easy. Anybody can paint clouds. Shoot, it's working so well. Maybe there's a, maybe there's another little doer right in there. I don't know. You just, it starts working and you start getting carried away and you, you just start playing with these little rascals which is great because it gives you a lot of practice. Back to my clean brush. Now if your brush has just a little bit of paint on it, you can just beat the devil out of it like that and it'll, it'll clean it off without going through that entire cleaning procedure. Because I'm noted for being lazy and I look for ways to do these things that are easy. There we are, something like that. Yeah, 
Yes, absolutely. Now we have another layer of cloud, so we have a lot of depth in the sky already. This one I gotta wash, it's got too much paint on it. So we'll just wash it off. There, shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. All right. Let's make a little happy mountain today. For that, I'm gonna use some black Prussian blue. We'll put some lizard and crimson and some brown in it. What the heck? Good dark color. Put quite a bit of crimson in there and with the blue it'll give it sort of a lavender cast. Pull the paint out very flat and cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go right up in here. And with that little bit we can go in here decide where our mountain lives and let's just drop it in. There it comes. It really doesn't matter. Just, just make a mountain. Unless you're trying to paint a particular mountain, just do one that you like. Now sometimes you, you want to paint a particular mountain and then you should follow the basic shape and form of that mountain. But a lot of times I just make them up. Most of the time I just make them up. In our world we can do anything that we want to do. There. So we just make up this kind of mountain that we want. There, see there comes another one. That easy. Scrape off the excess paint. Just scrape it off. You can probably hear it's getting pretty, pretty strong there. Getting in there and really pulling that. I'm going to take the big brush and pull that. I want it to just disappear in the mist down at the base. There we are. Grab that. See? Pull it. And then just blend it until it blends away. It'll look just like it's just sitting back here and floating. That easy. All right. Now, just using brush strokes, you're beginning to be able to see them. You can create the illusion of highlights and shadows in your mountain just by using brush strokes. See there? And it's a beautiful, beautiful way of laying your whole mountain range out without being committed. Because, see, you can go back and change it again now. That easy. It is a super way, though of giving you total freedom because you're not committed. Let's take, let's see, what do we use here? Let's, there's some white. Let's put some black in it and make a gray color. We'll just make a gray, maybe a little darker. What the heck? Yeah. Just some gray like it. And once again, cut off our little roll of paint. Lives right out there on the edge of the knife. And with that, we can begin putting the indication a few little highlights on here. Just a few little few little things that live out in here. Something about like Kent. Just pick them out. Think about where the light's coming from and then begin working with them. Just begin working with them. Most right-handed people will find it's it's easier and more natural to have the light coming from the right left-handed people, because they've been forced to do right-handed things their entire life, they may be able to do it either way, or they may have a preference. There is a theory that only left-handed people are true artists. Since I'm right-handed, I don't, I don't know if I adhere to that theory, but <laughs> it sounds good. All right. And sometimes you don't even want to bother to put shadows in there. You can just take something like this pull it, allow it to grab a little bit of that color, and just blend it with a knife. In fact, you can, you can literally paint the entire mountain with just the knife. You don't ever have to use a brush on it at all. And it makes some of the most interesting effects that you've ever seen. You can paint the entire painting using nothing but the knife. There, it's a little hard to do in the time frame that we have here. But at home where you have unlimited time, you literally can go back in there and just paint the entire painting. Nothing more than this old knife. You can put all kind of deep ridges and things there. You decide, you decide them. Wherever you want them. Wherever. It's okay. Take that right around like that. 
just to change the basic shape a little bit. There. But we actually have just used the same color on the on the back of the mountain here for the shadow. There is no shadow color. It is the basic mountain color is all we're using. All we're using. All right. No pressure. Absolutely no pressure. I think I've mentioned in other shows when I was teaching my son Steve to paint, I used to tell him just to pretend that he was a whisper that was floating across the mountain. His touch she had to be that gentle to make it work. Okay. We'll clean the old brush. And we'll take a little touch of titanium white on the two inch brush, just a little bit on the bottom. And let's just tap in the indication here and there and there and here of some misty areas right down at the base here. Nice misty area. Maybe, maybe a cloud just fell out of the sky and is laying down here. Well, it could happen. Maybe. <laughs> but just a, I want a very soft little misty area here. Very, very soft. Quiet little misty area. See how easy that is to do the little titanium white. Just barely touching. And you can create that illusion. There. Okay, let me grab a clean brush. Make sure it's dry. There, and I want to really beat the bottom to death. Just beat it up. That's where you take out all your frustrations and hostilities. It's better than going home and kicking the dog around. Yeah. Because you probably get bit if you do that anyway. There we are. All right. Now maybe, let's see here. Let's take some of that mountain color, a little bit of white in it, put a little sap green in it. Ooh, I like that color. Nice color. It's got sort of a greenish tint to it, but not a lot. A little roll of paint. And maybe up in here, maybe there's some, maybe there's some little, little mountains, little foothills that are right here. You decide where they are. Okay, right there. We we'll just drop them in wherever you think they should live. mountains. Lived in Alaska for over a dozen years and there's so many gorgeous, gorgeous mountains there. You can't help but just become captivated by them. There. I'm just rubbing the base of that very firmly. There we go. Just something like so. And that's about all we need to make the indication of some little footy hills that live there. Take some of the mountain color. And we'll tap it a little bit right down here at the base. Right down here at the base. Maybe. This little area. Maybe there's a little plain out here. A little meadow or something. Something out there. We'll take a little... Sap green, a little bit of yellow, mix them together. Make a nice green color. Tap a little bit into the bristles. Go right up in here. And just barely tapping, like so. We'll just put the indication of some little green things that live back here. So I say, this might be a little meadow or something. We back right at the foothills. It's up to you, you decide. You decide. Oh, I see some. Okay, okay. It's coming to me. As you paint, you'll see these things. You'll get ex <laughs> you do get excited. There. I see. Let me grab a number three fan brush, a little bit of brown on it. Watch right, 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 right here. There it is. A little, maybe there's a little path, a little road or something. It goes wee back up in there, a little dark sand on it too. Van Dyke and Dark Sand are mixed together. There it comes. See? All right, take a little 
little touch of white right on the same brush and you go right back and highlight a little of that don't want much just enough to make it sparkle here and there there all right oh, a little blue a little mountain color a little sap green all those nice colors we had let's have water I'll make some make some reflections there we go just pull straight down to make reflections Reflections are one of the easiest things that happen in this technique. One of the easiest. Shoot, as traditional painter, reflections used to drive me crazy. Hard to do. Sometimes I'd even turn the canvas upside down and try to repaint things. This, all you do is pull it down, go across, and you instantly have it. That easy. Already looks like water. We hadn't even done anything. Okay, let's take Prussian blue, black, Brown, crimson, sap, mix them together. All right, let me wipe the old knife. I just wiped the knife on a paper towel. Fan brush, number six. A lot of color. And maybe, maybe there's some little distant trees back in here. There they are. There they are. See them? Just some little indications. Maybe they come right on down. If they're real small, you can just do like that and lift up. See? That easy. That'll give us an indication of some little background trees far away. Of course, I've missed the bottom of the grass up there. Very hard to correct. We'll have to do all of that. <laughs> we don't make mistakes. Shoot. Can do easy. I tell you what, I want a big tree. You know me, I like big trees. I think I'll put a big tree right there. One of the ways of making a big tree, you can just use the knife. We'll just use a knife today. I like to make these trees with a knife because when, they're, when they get dry, they're very thick and they literally, they stand off the canvas. Very neat, very neat. If you try to do this with a brush, I just don't think it would work right. But you can take that knife and make these beautiful trees that easy. They live right there on your knife. All you gotta do is just sort of shake them out. Okay, see? Maybe, back to my fan brush. Maybe I want a few more little trees right here. You decide. And you can change your mind at any time that you desire. Any old time that you desire. Maybe down in here, take a little brown. Maybe there's, maybe there's all kinds of little things living in there. Whoops, I've got a little looter hanging off there. There we go. All kinds of things. Now then, maybe over in here. Yeah, why not? We'll put a tree right there. We showed you how to make one with a knife. Now you can make, make them with a fan brush. One inch brush, two inch, it doesn't matter. You can really make trees with just about any old thing. Shoot, we'll put, a, we'll put several trees right here. There they come. Try making those trees with a knife though. You'll be shocked at what you end up with. You can make some gorgeous, gorgeous effects. And once again, you can paint the entire painting using nothing but the painting knife, if you want to. If you want to, it's just a way of giving you more options to paint. And the more ways that you can find to paint, the happier it'll make you. Maybe that comes right on down there, we don't know. I'll take a little more of that brown. So you can just put all kinds of little duders in there. Isn't that neat, though? You really can do that. Okay, now, let's have a little fun here for just a second. The tree that's made with a knife. I'll show you how to, you can highlight it with a knife. We'll take a little green. Just touch and barely go over it so that it just picks up on those high points. See there? That's all there is to it. And then on the other side, there wouldn't be as much light. It'll be a darker green. 
So you can put a few little indications, not as many though. You want that side to remain darker. But just like that, you can make a tree. Or you can do it the normal way that we do it. We'll take a little sap green, some of the yellows, mix them together, and we can make a nice green and come back and highlight them. Either way, just want to show you a couple different ways you can make very effective little trees. There he is. There he is. Just a few little duders there. Then we'll bring this one right down in front. There we go. Darker, darker, darker as it works down. All right. I'll take some of that yellow and green that we had there on the knife. And you can put the indication of just little grassy things, just using the knife. There. Just let some of these little things just work their way right through there. There we are. Wherever you want them to be. Let's take a little dark sienna, a little liquid white, mix them together. And with that, we can come in here. Put the indication of a little water line there. A little bit of dirt right at the edge. Something about like so. There we go. Wherever you want them to live. All right. And we take just plain liquid white and just a little of it. And I want to put the indication, just a small amount. A little watery line lives right down at the bottom. Shoot, maybe there's a little stone right there. Put a little brown in. Take a little brown and white. You can highlight that rascal a little bit. And you're in business. That easy. You can make a happy little rock that lives there. In your world, you decide. There we go. And with that, I think we've about got a finished painting. We'll sign this little rascal. Call it done. Take a little bit of red, a little paint thinner and we'll sign it. Really hope you've enjoyed this little painting. Would love to hear from you if you have time to drop us a line. Until then, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you a happy painting, and God bless my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. Today I thought we'd do the little painting that you see at the beginning of the show, the one that's got the little character that walks in the snow. I'll show you how that one was done. But first, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got done up here. I started with a regular old 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use whatever size is convenient. Took a piece of contact paper and I just cut a shape out that sort of, in my mind, resembles a window. That's all. Then we took some masking tape and just made a couple of little doers with masking tape up and down like that. We've covered the entire thing then with a very thin coat of liquid white just to make it wet and it's ready to go. So, let's just have some fun today. Let's start out today with a, let's start with a little bit of the midnight black. Just a small amount on the old two inch brush and a little Prussian blue. Just mix them together on the brush, it doesn't matter. Little of each. All right, let's go right up here. And we'll start up in here, just making our normal little crisscross strokes, little X's. And just paint right over the top of the masking tape and everything. Just paint right over it like it's not even there. Because if you were looking out the window, the little cross members in the window would be in front of whatever you've seen anyway. So just paint it on. Maybe a little bit in here, wherever, wherever, there. A little more of that color, we'll put a little bit up in here, like so. There. Just make the little X's though, and it'll blend with the liquid white that's on the canvas. And automatically your color will just blend together. There we are. Something about like that. Now then, we can just blend that. See, there's spots that are lighter than other spots, and we leave those in there intentionally. And you could go back with a little titanium white if you wanted to and brighten those little spots. In fact, I tell you, why not wash the brush and do that? Just to show you. But you can make those little spots as bright as you want them. Just shake off the brush. <laughs> 
and beat the devil out of it. Let's take just a little bit of white. Maybe right up in here we'd want a little brighter area. It's up to you. And you can just take the white and drop it in. Maybe even one up in here. But that's all there is to it. Okay. Now then, this won't be an exact duplicate of what you see at the opening of the show, but it'll certainly show you how that one was made. All right. Now, let's take, use that same old color, it's working pretty good. Black, Prussian blue, and white. And we'll just mix them together. Mix them together. I want to make a light blue color here. Something that's getting pretty close right there. You just sort of mix it till it's the flavor that you like. And I sort of like that. So let's wipe off the old knife. I think I'll grab number three fan brush since that's what I picked up. Load it full of paint. And let's go right up here. We have a little tree that's far away. So touch. Now this time we're going to push upward. Sometimes we push downward with the brush to make little evergreens. Today I'm going to push upward. Go right over the masking tape, just like it wasn't there. Don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Something about like that. Now then. And, 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 there, yep, there's one right there. But just put these little trees wherever you think they should live in your world. There we go. I like making little trees like this. They're a lot of fun. But just push upward. You're making the bristles bend toward the top of the tree. There we are. Something about like that. Push in some little bushy things. Same basic way. We're just pushing upward with a brush. Okay. And that's basically how we made the little background trees. You could take the knife and you could put a little stick or twig. Maybe there's a little tree there that maybe he not doing so well. He doesn't, maybe he doesn't have any leaves on him. Just an old stalk sticking out there. Maybe there's a couple of them. I don't know. Wherever you think they should be. Just drop them in. That easy. But you want these just a little bit darker than the sky. Don't get too crazy. Now then, let's take that color and we'll just lay it over here for the time being. Might use it later. Who knows? Prussian blue, black, crimson, Throw a little lizard crimson in there. We'll mix this up a pile of dark color. We're going to make some dark trees later on, so we'll have that ready. Now then, since this is a winter scene, we had snow in it, because I remember the little guy, he walked around in the snow back here. Now, believe it or not, the little guy was me too. It's hard to see. All right. Now, let's have a little bit of snow right here. See there? That easy. Just pull it across. Snow is one of the easiest things to paint in this technique. There we are. There we are. That's simple. Old two inch brush will do it in a heartbeat. Okay. Shoot, let's build a bigger tree. And for that, I'm going to get a bigger brush. I'm going to go to number six. But you could continue to use a number three. It doesn't matter. Just a little faster with this one. All right. We have another tree in our world. Yeah, it is right there. Same thing, though. I want to give it an upward push. There. It's got some of them upstanding limbs in here. There we go. This one's very dark. Pure color. There. Same color as the other one, but without the white. Minus the white, that's all. And maybe it comes down to about there. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Take the knife. I'm just scratching a little indication of a trunk in there. I have several fan brushes going. So I'm going to take another one, put some liquid white, some titanium white, mix them together. Liquid white's in there only to make the paint a little thinner because you know our golden rule. Thin paint will stick to a thick paint. All right. And we'll go up in here. And with this thalo blue and white, we'll just put the indication of some highlights on this little tree. Little sparklers. That'll make that rascal stand out. There. 
I'm going to grab a one inch brush, use some of that same dark color. And we had a little bush lived right here. There he comes. Just push in a basic shape. That's all we're looking for here. Just a very basic little shape. About like that. See? But leave some of that background in there. It helps create the illusion of depth and distance in the painting. Now I'm going to dip the brush into liquid white and pull it in one direction. One direction. To load it. Liquid white and then through the titanium white in one direction. Look at the end of the brush. A lot of paint on it. Probably the biggest mistake made is not enough paint. Let's go up here. Now with that, we can come up in here and we can put some little snow-covered bushes right under that tree. There. If you had trouble making that stick, add the least little touch of liquid white to do it. There we are. Because it needs to be thinner than what's on the canvas. If the thinnest paint's on your canvas, it'll come off and go on your brush. If the paint on the canvas is thinner than the brush, it's most important. You want the paint on your brush to be thinner than what's already on the canvas. That way, the canvas will literally pull the paint off. It'll take what it needs, <laughs> just like a tax man. There we go. Come right in here, and we'll pull that down. We'll create a whole other plane in this painting just by doing that. Intentionally grab a little bit of that blue. It makes gorgeous little shadows automatically. Automatically. There. All right. Now, you ready for a big tree? We'll just use the old fan brush. Load it full of the dark, dark color. Let's go up in here. Make your decision. Whew, might as well just do it. Might as well just do it and start pushing upward. We're going to create a monster tree here. A big tree. There he comes. Just keep pushing up. Think about individual limbs and branches, little arms on the tree. My little squirrels have to have a place to go. In the winter time, they get sort of cold. They have to go up here and build them a nest. So to take life easy. There we are. Something about like that. I said big tree, I wasn't kidding. I forgot how big that tree was in that painting. But isn't that little opening neat with a little guy walking back here? That little, little opening is the idea of one of my very good friends here at the station, Jerry Morton, who's one of the engineers that puts all this together. He comes up with those. There we are. I don't know where he gets all of his ideas, but they, they are neat. I'm gonna put another one right here. I like that little painter guy. For many years, I've wanted, I've wanted to take the little painter guy and, and do, do a show with him. Let him do all kinds of things. And maybe in the very near future, we can do something like that. I've had some fantastic people ask us to come to Branson, Missouri and, and do a little show with the painter man. So maybe we'll do that. If you're there, stop by and say hello. I'd love to talk to you. Just taking and pulling that out, like that, and off we'll go. There. Now then, find my little brush. It's got the thalo blue on it. Little thalo blue, little white, little liquid white. You know that we want it thinner, so it'll stick on there. Thalo blue, titanium white, liquid white. See, brush is loaded both sides. Let's go up here. And we'll come right in here. I use the thalo blue because we use Prussian blue in the sky and I want it to stand out. And it sort of makes evergreens look like blue spruce trees, which I love. When I lived in Alaska, I had a huge blue spruce that lived in my front yard. Gorgeous tree. Absolutely one of God's most beautiful creations. There we are. Darker, darker, darker down here toward the bottom, less and less. And this one back here in the back. I don't want a whole bunch. It's too far back. I don't want him to be real important in this painting. The quiet little tree. There we are. All right. Now then. In our little painting that you saw at the beginning, we had a couple of huge birch trees. So let's do those. We'll take Midnight Black 
And there's a little blue in there, but it's mostly black, mostly midnight black. Let's put a little Van Dyke brown in it too. About like that. Pull it out flat. Cut across, get a little roll of paint. There you can see it, right under the edge of the knife. Okay, this really is your bravery test. We're gonna start way down here, and we're just gonna begin working up. Right across the tape, right across everything. Just let this tree go all the way out of the top. Whew. When I said big tree, I was serious, wasn't I? It is a big tree. But they're a lot of fun to make. And if you don't want the tree in your world to be quite that big, make him a little smaller. It's totally and completely up to you. Any size you want him to be. All right. I like big trees because they reach right up to the sky. Nearly touch the sun. All right. Well, not quite. If I remember, the, somebody said the sun was about 93 million miles away. I guess the tree's not quite that tall. But he's a big tree. Oh, right through my evergreen. But we know he's back here. We know he's back here. And we learned how to paint him. So it's not, it's not wasted. Anytime you learn, it's not a wasted effort. There. And I like, I like to paint birch trees and other kind of trees too. When the paint is dry, you can literally feel the bark just like a real tree. All right. Now, let's take, go back to our titanium white. I'm just going to use straight titanium white. And I want to touch and sort of give it a, I'm exaggerating, a round pull. Touch and sort of give it a, and it makes the tree look round. And those old square trees, they're sort of rare. You need to, need to make your tree have a round look to it. Boy, it'd be nice if they come square, wouldn't it? You just cut two by fours off of them without even running them through the mill. There we are. Big old birch tree. There. And this one. Now I've decided this one's in the front. So we'll do him last. Always do the thing that in your mind is the farthest away and then work forward, forward, forward. There. These are fun. I like to make old birch trees. When I lived in Alaska, I used to do a lot of paintings for the tourists there, and they always wanted birch trees and northern lights. Mm. Of course, that's sort of what Alaska is noted for, I guess. And they were a lot of fun to paint anyway, so I didn't mind. There, a little dark in there. About like that. And you can just keep playing back and forth and building this up until it gets to any degree of thickness or color that you want. There. Of course, you can piddle it to death, too. All right. Let's take our liner brush, paint thinner. Put quite a bit of paint thinner up here. And let's make some thin paint and we'll paint some arms on these old trees. Got to have an arm on him. But doesn't have any leaves. Got too cold. Leaves chickened out and they went south for the winter. There we are. But there, just the paint thinner will allow you to flow. The paint flow right off the bristles, right onto the canvas. If you have trouble making it flow, add a little more paint thinner. This one seems to be working pretty good, so we'll just keep on going with it. There we are, big old arm. We can come back and put a little highlight on it, maybe even a little snow. But just pretend that the tape's not even there. Just let the, let the branches grow the way they would grow if the tape wasn't there. Don't worry about it. When we pull that off, it'll, it'll make it look realistic. And this is where I get letters from people and they say, Bob, I don't think I can paint. I've got a little nervous twitch in my hand. This is your painting. Because if you have a little nervous twitch, it really works better doing these tree branches. 
I have, I have youngsters in their 90s who write me and tell me that they never believed that they could paint, and they're doing it, and they're doing it every day. It's fantastic to hear success stories. There we are. So the tree over here says he needs a limb too. Now this tree, we decided was in the front, so his arm will go right over the top of the other one. So let's just start him right here, and he'll go or, 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 distinctly over. That makes him look like he's in the front. There. I don't want him to get angry at us. Nothing worse than a mad tree. All right. No. Oh. And maybe here's one that goes off that way. We don't know where it goes. Don't know that it even matters in this particular painting. You can just put arms wherever you want them. Now I'm going to clean the brush and just dip it into a little bit of the liquid white. This is just liquid white. And maybe we can come back in here and there and there and here. Just put the indication that there's a little snow sitting in some of these places on here. Something about like that. But isn't that neat? That's all there is to it. Okay, and with that, it gives us a pretty good little tree. Down here at the bottom, grab a fan brush, put a little liquid white on my brush, titanium white. Let's go down in here, grab a little of that color, and we'll put a little snow right down there. There, we got a little of that color. I want the color in there for a shadow. Something about like that. Okay, we can pop in the indication of a little bush. See, that easy. All right, now then, over here we had a little fence. So for that I'm gonna take a little Van Dyke, a little dark sienna, mix them together. And right here just lives what remains of a little old fence. It's about gone. There, something about like that. Come back with our one inch brush. Let's put a little bush on his foot. Just a little bush lives down in here, something like that liquid white, and we'll go through titanium white, same as we did before, maybe a little blue on that one, because there's white behind it. We need to separate just a little bit, a little blue on it. A little snow-covered bush lives right there. A little bit of the titanium white, pull that out a little, and that easy. Shoot, we got that rascal in there. Now, while I have liquid white and titanium white mixed together, I want to put the indication, if you're looking out the window, on the old windows supports here, that there's a little snow that has just collected in here. This is a gorgeous painting to give as a Christmas present. See, you can just put it on right there like that. We'll have some up here. Go right over the tree branches, because this would be in front. There. But this paint's a little thinner. It's got liquid white in it. Or maybe it's on all of them here. And here's one right here. Just put a little bit right in there. A little more of the liquid white. Brighten that one up a little bit so it shows. All right. Even a little down here on the bottom. What the heck? Just a tiny bit. Something about like so. All right. Now yeah, let's take us a script liner brush. Dip it in a little paint thinner. And we can go around and here and there and there and here. Put in a few little sticks and twigs and just little things that look like little finished details in your painting. There. See, just a happy little old stick that lives out there. And some little weeds around the fence. Shoot, maybe there's still even indication of a little, little wire hanging on some of those. Not much. Tell you what, I'm going to take some white and a little touch of dark sienna. A little white, a little dark sienna. Cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go right up in here. And let's just, let's highlight this so it stands out a little bit more. Oh yeah, that's much better. It will sort of rest in there. We want it to pop out. There we go. Now, looks more like an old fence. I can go back and put a few more little sticks and twigs in here. Maybe there's one down here. Oh, a wiggledy one. See? 
Okay, let you let your hand just sort of jerk around a little bit. Make all the little weird sticks and things, because they're always there. They sort of stick up through the snow, wherever you want them to be. We got a second left here. Maybe I'll put just a little more detail on some of these limbs, because I like to have a lot of little little sticks and twigs on mine. There we are. That's what makes it interesting. If you try this painting, take your time and do a photograph and send us. I would love to see what you're doing. And, and every so often we put them together and put them on a little board and we show them on TV so you can see what people all over the country are doing with this. And there's some that are fantastic and some that are better than that. It's just wonderful that people have so much success in painting. There. All right. Okay, we're about to get this little devil finished here. Just figure out where you want little sticks and twigs and any old where. There's some right in there. Okay. I think we're about to the point we can take the old contact paper off and see what we got here. So we'll bring the camera up here and pull this off. Isn't that fantastic? It does look like you're looking out a window. It is. But as I say, it's a very simple little painting that you can do. Try it, because I really think you're going to enjoy this one. It's sort of different. It makes a beautiful gift to give to friends and relatives, especially, as we mentioned earlier, around Christmas time. And no one appreciates a gift more than one that you produce with your own hand. From all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. And as you can see, today I have one of my little friends here with me. This is a little night hawk that I brought in for you to see. Isn't he the most gorgeous little character? He is something else. I love these little animals so much, ever so often I just like to share one with you. So I say, this is a night hawk. And he, he flies around at night and eats insects by the ton. Just flies around with his mouth open. This one's been injured. He only has one wing. But he's doing very, very well. So, Anyway, this is a painting show, so I think we should paint. Let's start out today and have run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, I'm going to set this little fellow down. So if you'll come right up here, I'll show you what I've got done already. Okay. Set him right over there. Today I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use whatever size is convenient. And I've just covered it with a very thin, even coat of liquid white. So it's all ready to go. And I, I thought maybe today we'd just do a painting. It's a lot of fun. I think you'll enjoy it. Let's start out with a small amount. We'll use a little phthalo blue. Take the two inch brush. Just tap a little into the bristles, something like so. Let's go right up in here. And we'll make a happy little sky in this painting just by making little, little X's, little crisscross strokes. We start at the top and begin working downward. And that way, the color, the phthalo blue, will mix with the liquid white that's already on the canvas. And automatically, automatically, your sky will get lighter and lighter as you work down toward the horizon. And in a landscape, that's exactly what we're looking for. So it works without you even worrying about it. There. I'm a very lazy person, so I look for easy ways to paint. And this is one of the easiest, most effective ways I've ever seen. All right, something about like that. Now, I want to make the corners a little darker, so to bring your eye into the center of the painting. For that, I'll use a little Prussian blue, because it's much, much stronger. Whew. Much stronger. So just up here in the corners, and I'll let it blend that downward, we'll add a little Prussian blue, a little bit over on the other side, too, right over here. All right, and when this is done, that really will help bring the eye into the painting. There we go. And I thought maybe today we'd paint a happy little cloud. I like little clouds, so we'll just do that. I'm just wiping some of that blue down on the bottom, get it off the brush, and, and we'll just use it for background material. No use wasting that good paint. Now then, let's wash the old brush. That's a fun part of this. 
we wash our brushes with odorless paint thinner. Since this is oil paint, there we are. Shake off the excess <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. That really is the fun part. Now, I'm gonna take titanium white, just plain old titanium white, and tap the brush into it. Just tap it, like so. One corner, basically. Let's go up in here. Now maybe, see I left a little area sort of open there because I want a little cloud to live right in there. I'm just gonna sort of tap it in and let it, let it wander right off the canvas, a little more of the white. We just sort of let it wander around. Clouds are one of the freest things in nature and they just sort of float around and have a good time all day. There, something about like that. Wherever you want them, that's exactly where they should live in your world. Exactly where they should live. Maybe, yeah. Why not? We'll have one up here too. Just drop them in. Okay, let me grab a little blender brush. With a blender brush here, we can very gently just blend this. The blender brush is so soft that you can go right over the paint without causing any major disasters. There we are. Fluff it up a little bit. Isn't that one of the easiest, nicest ways you've ever seen of making a fluffy little cloud that lives in your world? There, you can do it. There we are. All right. So we'll just keep using that same brush we were tapping the clouds in with. I want to touch a little bit of thalo blue. A little white, a little thalo blue mixed together. I want a light blue color. And let's go up in here and maybe, maybe, yeah, I like it. See, it's just a little darker than the sky is. Just a little bit, just enough so it stands out. Maybe in our world back here, there's a little footy hill that lives right there. Wherever you want it, you decide. Just tap in a basic little shape, something like so. Give it a little upward lift. Look like little trees far, far away, far away. I'm gonna put a big tree over there, so I'm not worried about it. You know me, I like big trees, so I'm gonna have one there. Now then, I'm gonna put another layer. Same color, only I'll make it just a small amount darker, just a little darker, but it's the same color. And right there. As things get closer to you in a the landscape, they should get darker and darker in value. See there, that easy. Already it looks like it's closer to you than the first one we did. Sneaky, huh? But that's one of the little things that'll make your landscape absolutely special when you do it. There we are. Something about like that. Now, once again, I'm gonna just lift upward. It'll pick up some of those little pieces of paint we laid on there and make it look like little trees far away. Far, far away. Now you could spend all day with your little tiny Tim brush and, and paint each one of those in individually. But shoot, why? I think this looks just as good and you can do it very quickly. Oh, two inch brush will do wonderful things for you if you just give it a chance. Let's take some Prussian blue and some black. Let's get, let's get crazy here. Prussian blue, black, I'll be right back. Get a little sap green, some crimson. And I'm just brush mixing these, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're just looking for a good dark color here. We're moving into the foreground more. Big decision time. Maybe, yeah, right there. This dark, we're applying only so we can put some light on top of it. You need dark in order to show light. So that's all this is right here. Just tapping in the dark. But think about the lay of the land. Begin thinking how you want the land to flow. Something like that. I like these little distant foothills. Aren't those gorgeous? Some of the beautiful states, you know, like the Carolinas and etc. Missouri. You have you have all these little rolling foothills. They're gorgeous. I love them. And you can make layer after layer after layer. Shoot, we do a lot of traveling, and when we go through there, we Always got our camera out because it's so pretty. Mm, there. I'm gonna pull straight down. I want a little pond there, I think. And in our world, we want a little pond. It's that easy. All you gotta do is pull downward. Straight down though. Decide where it lives and drop it in. There we go. It's most important these lines come straight down. 
Otherwise, it'll look like your water's tilted. And still water is always flat. It's lazy. It's like me. Now then, shoot, I'm just going to use that same old brush. It seems to be working pretty good. I'll go right into some of the yellows. I'm going to use all the yellows. And every once in a while, I'm going to touch a little bit of bright red. But I want to tap that to get a little, little bit of paint. See that little roll right along there? There's one just like it on the brush. And with that, then we'll come back on this dark, and we'll begin putting in some little grassy areas that live way back in the distance there. There they come. Just load a little more color on the brush. You decide where they live. And put them wherever you want in your world. Wherever. That's what I like about painting. It, it gives you freedom. Oh, you, can, you can create any illusion that you want. Any illusion that you want. At least on this piece of canvas. About like it. There. I've got several brushes going here. Let me grab another one. I think we back in the background were to have a tree. Grab the knife here. Let's mix up. We'll just use a little bit of everything. I'm going to put some phthalo green in there. Prussian blue, black, crimson. We just throw it all in there. Maybe even a little Van Dyke brown. As long as it's good and dark. I like that phthalo green in there, though. It'll give it a beautiful, beautiful color. Let me wipe the old knife. Now, same thing. I'm just going to use a two-inch brush, load a little color on it. And let's go up in here. Time to make some major decisions in our world. Maybe there's a happy little tree. It lives right there. Something like that. Once again, all we're doing now is putting in some dark color so that we can come back and highlight it. Maybe that tree lives there. I don't know. You decide. In your world, you have to make these decisions. Where does trees live? Rivers flow? All right. Shoot, that's pretty good. Maybe we'll do another one. About like that. Basic shapes. That's all we're looking for at this time. That's all we're looking for. Don't worry about it. Let's go on the other side. I want a tree over there, too. Yeah, why not? Right there. You know, when you paint, you just sort of look at things that are happening in your painting and, and make decisions. Learn how to compose while you're painting. All you need to do is start out with a time of day and a time of year in your mind and sort of let it go. You need to know the time of day so you know where your light's coming from. You need to know the time of year so you know if there's snow on the ground or it's bright green. But other than that, you just have a basic idea of where you want to go. And let your imagination carry you anywhere that you want to be. To me, that's, that's really the excitement in painting. There. Now, this is quite dark, so I want the reflection in the water to be much darker here. That easy. We got it. See? That's all there is to it. I'm going to take a little script liner brush. Take a little bit of white. I'm going to get a little dark sienna. We'll just mix them on the script liner brush. And with that, I'll put the indication here and there of a few little tree trunks. We don't have to worry about them being too great because we're going to cover most of them up. A few little things in here. Then let's go on the other side and put a couple over there. And those little trees, don't want them left out. You could actually just take the knife and scrape through the paint and it'd give the indication of some tree trunks. And you wouldn't even have to do anything. There. Now then. We'll just keep using this old two-inch brush. Seems to be working okay. And with that, we'll tap in a little bit of color. And let's begin putting some highlights on these little trees. Now, you could use a one-inch brush. And I get letters from fantastic people all over the country. And sometimes they'll say, I'm more comfortable with a one-inch brush. It will do exactly the same thing. Maybe not quite as fast. But if you don't have a Mino director on you, then you have unlimited time. You can just paint it any way you want it. So at home, if you want to use a one-inch brush to do this, try it. Try both. See which one works the nicest for you. The only thing we want to do here is give you ideas, show you how to make effects, and turn you loose on the world. Let's go over the other side. This little tree. Don't want to be left out. We'll start with this one down here. There, see, well, now he's a happy little tree. He was sad till we put some leaves on him. 
But in our world, everything's happy. There. I spent half my life in the military playing soldier. And now, I just make happy little things. All right. There's no military allowed in my paintings. There. No bad guys, no good guys. Just, just people who enjoy life like God's creations. That's all we have here. And you can create any world that you want on canvas. And if you have trouble making that paint stick at all, add the least little touch of paint thinner to your brush and then go through the paint. It'll thin the paint and it'll stick right on there, no problem. Add a little sap green to my color. There. Maybe. Yeah, there. But see how you can just make all these little bushes and stuff? That easy. That easy. It's not difficult at all. You decide where they live and drop them in. Very quickly. If you paint, you'll learn to see and you'll learn, you'll learn what imagination is. Shoot. Oh, I gotta have a little house here. This is just perfect place for a house. Let's, right here, right here. I, I see. I, I would like to live right here under this group of trees. So we'll just scrape out a basic shape, something about like so. I scrape it out to do two things, to lay out the basic idea of the house and to remove excess paint. We'll start with Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, just mixed together loosely, loosely, so you have both color. Leave it marbled, both of them are there. We're just gonna block it in using these browns and we can decide what we want to do with it. There, see, maybe, yeah. There's a side right there. Let's get crazy. Shoot, maybe, maybe there's a little shed that sticks right out on the front here. There. Now then we can take a little bit of white, a little brown. I'm gonna put some yellow ochre in it too. White, brown, little yellow ochre. And let's come right along in here Put some boards in this old place. Just a few little dooters. Wherever. There we go. See them? Something about like that. I'm gonna take some bright red, a little bit of dark sienna mixed with it, a little touch of white. And with that, I like red roofs. So I'm gonna put a red roof. But now, when you do your painting, maybe where you live, there's a different color roof. That's okay. It's okay. All I want to do is show you how to make these little rascals. You design them any way you want them. Maybe where you're at there, any color roof. I don't know. As I travel around, I see just about anything that you can imagine somewhere. Let's take, just want to firm that edge up a little bit. Not much color over here. It's away from the light. Not going to see much over here. We said we was going to have a little little attachment onto the house, a little shed maybe. So that easy. That easy. See, we got him. There, it's all there is to it. So it's quite a nice little house. He's okay. Maybe it's a, looks more like a little farmer's place out here. Maybe this was a farm a long time ago. Maybe it sort of grew up around here like at my house. All right. Yeah, we take the liner brush, little paint thinner, a little bit of brown. Maybe, yeah, if this was a farm, maybe you can still see a little bit of fence. It goes up, goes over the hill back here. We don't know where it goes. You decide. But just to give the indication. All right. Time to have fun. You know me. I want a big tree. And the big old tree is gonna live right up here in the sky. Here he comes. Big old tree. There. See? Be brave. Throw him in. Don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. On this piece of canvas, anything that happens you can take care of. Don't worry. When you first start painting, the thought of hitting this big old piece of blank canvas sort of scary, I know. But once you jump in there and do it, 
it just works great. I want to take a little dark sienna, a little white, mix them together. I'm going to put a little bit of indication of some land right out through here. Just a little bit. Don't want too much. Something about like that. There, it comes right on around. There we are. Take a little touch of the liquid white. Pull it out as flat as I can get it. We'll put a little water line back here. Just a little light area to sort of separate the two darks. There. And a little bit right in here. All right. We're getting crazier now. Just put all these good dark colors in here. Yeah, let's do this. We'll just close this little pond right in. You can just do anything that you want here. Just fill this up. All kinds of little duders. Just think about the lay of the land here. You could really put this in with a paint roller, but it's an excellent way. Well, maybe not a paint roller, but you'd put it in just any old way you want. It's an excellent way, though, to practice with a brush. Make friends with it. I would suggest you practice the stroke that you're going to use next time right here. Don't ever waste an opportunity to practice. All right. A little sap green, a little yellow. And we can come right in here. And we can make a little grassy area out of that. That easy. That easy. Maybe I'll, oh yeah, I like it better. A little bit brighter right there. Something about like that. Now then, maybe a pear in a tree. So, a minute ago I mentioned you just take a knife and you can scrape and you can make the indication of tree trunks. Just like that. It's up to you. Whatever way is easiest for you. Sometimes you want to take your time and paint them in. Sometimes you just want to scratch them in, keep right on going. It's really up to you. Put a few little leaves and things up here on this tree. Out. I did it fantastic. With a big old two inch brush, you can do things that look so detailed. And with practice, mm, you will be amazed. I have people write me every day and they say, You know, I did, a, I did some paintings the other day and I took them and showed them to my friends, and they actually s started looking for numbers on them because they didn't believe I could do that. I hear that every day. Every day. And nothing's greater than hearing about people's successes when they do this. That really makes it all worthwhile. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. There, another little tree lives right here, little bush. Happy little bush, huh? There, wherever. You decide, you decide. See, I'll show you another way, I'll show you another way. You can make grassy areas. Maybe these are closer to us and they're a little bigger. I'm going to use a fan brush, just number six fan brush. You can use it any size you want. I like a number six. Same colors, though. Same colors. But there's a multitude of colors happening on that brush. Okay, let's go up in here. Now, you can just take and just give upward push. Now, sort of adjust the brush back and forth because if you go straight in, well, let's do it. So you get a big smiley face. So adjust the brush until it's going fairly straight. And you can just give it a little push, and all those little grassy things will happen. That easy. That easy. And it makes grass that looks like it's closer to us. There. I tell you what. Now let's take a little bit of our brown colors. Maybe we can see a little soil, a little dirt through there. If you want it in your world, just drop it in. We take a little brown, a little white, mix it together, and very gently, that easy, that easy, just run right over it. Now we can come back with our little fan brush and just pop in some little grassy areas around it to make it look like it's part of the painting, that easy, see, there, but isn't that a fantastic way of making little grassy, little grassy areas that are a little closer to you. 
and a little practice with this, and you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. Absolutely amazed. I know I am every day. Every day. It's like a gift. Something new happens on the canvas. Study it when it happens. Even Sometimes even a mistake, or what you think is a mistake, turns out to be a learning experience that maybe is better than what you were trying to do. Evaluate it. We don't make mistakes, you know. We have happy accidents. <laughs> I want to take a number three fan brush. Doesn't matter what size you use, I just happen to pick it up. And maybe in our world there's a, maybe an old tree was cut down or fell down right here and there's part of the stump still, still lingering around. We'll just put it in like that. And we can take the knife with a little brown and white on it. And we're just sort of highlighting. There we are. Poor old tree. Him fall down. Probably hurt. But he's okay now. And then we just sort of fill that up with some little grassy areas. And he lives right in there now. We take our knife. Just scrape here and there and put in all kind of little sticks and twigs and happy little things that live all out here in, the, in this beautiful little scene. And I think, I think, let's take our old liner brush, a little bit of the bright red, paint thinner. I think I'm going to sign this one, call it finished. Hope you've enjoyed this little painting. It's very simple and it will teach you how to use all the equipment and it's a lot of fun. And with the old signature on here, I think we're going to call that one finished from all of us here. I'd like to wish you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Uh, hey, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd do a little seascape, one that's real easy, and I believe you're going to enjoy it. Let's start out and hammer on all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, <laughs> let me show you this crazy canvas I got up here today. Today I've taken my standard old 18 by 24 inch canvas, but I've painted the top with alizarin crimson acrylic. Let me say that again. It's acrylic on top. And the bottom is black gesso. Then I've covered the entire thing with a very thin coat of the liquid clear. Down here on the bottom, I've taken a little Prussian blue and sap green and ran across just a little bit. And down here, a little brown made from alizarin crimson and sap green. So there's brown on the bottom. There's sort of a blue green here. And this just has clear on it and we'll play. All right, <laughs> just getting the introduction there was a biggie. Let's take a little titanium white, then I'm going to come right around here, get a little bit of the midnight black, and I'm going to make a gray color, just white and black, or black and white, whatever your preference. Now then, let's go right up in here, and I'm just going to, just going to dance in a few little areas here and there, just a light gray color. I don't want to cover up all this red, but here and there, I want to have just some little indications. The white is very opaque, but if you get it thin enough, the red will still show through, and it'll give a reddish hue to our painting, at least in the sky. There. Something about like that. That's basically all we're looking for. Just some little indications here and there. All right. Once again, I don't want to kill all this red. I want it to come through the color, so you need to really thin it out. And because the liquid clear is on there, you can get this very thin and it'll work out for you very nicely. There. Now, while I have a little brush going, I'm going to take a very, very small amount of Thalo Blue. Just a little bit on the old two inch brush. Very small amount. I just want to tint the sky here and there with a little Thalo Blue. Not much, not much. Be careful. Once again, I don't want to lose this reddish aura that we have through the entire painting. Just want to add a little blue here and there. But once again, not much. Maybe a little right down in here. Just wherever, wherever, and we'll sort of play back and forth as we work. Now then. Okay, time to wash the old brush, because that's a fun part. I just really look for excuses to wash the brush. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. There we go. Let's build this today a happy little cloud. I'm going to take a little titanium white right on the old two inch brush, same old brush. And let's go up in here and let's just drop in the indication of some little clouds that live up in here. 
maybe, wherever, it doesn't much matter. Wherever you think they should live, that's exactly where they should be. Just some basic little shapes. Okay, be right back. I'm going to grab a, a blender brush here. This is a very, very soft little blender brush. It allows you just to blend these things together. That easy. That easy. All right. See how easy it is to make a fantastic little cloud? You can do this. All you need is a little practice, the right equipment, and off you go. Okay. That's what makes this style of painting so unique and so wonderful, is that anybody can do it. You don't, you don't have to be blessed by Michelangelo at birth. You can create a beautiful painting. Yeah, you can do it. All right, maybe another little happy cloud lives right here. Notice we're doing them in layers, though. Now then, back to my little blender. La, 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 and there we are. Just blend it away, blend it away, wherever you want it to go. There. See, but this keeps the edge nice and firm there by doing it in layers. So don't get greedy. I know, it gets good, and you don't want to stop. You want to do them all at one time. But take your time, take your time. Just try to do one at a time. There. Maybe. I'm just letting this sort of dance around. Maybe it comes right out here. Wherever. We're going to have some big clouds in the sky today. So you just decide where you want them and drop them in. It's really that easy. Just tap them in. Maybe there's even a little bit. goes off in here somewhere. Back to our little blender. That's all I'm doing, just picking up the blender. And then we'll begin putting these together. Just blend them away very softly. We're going to have a monster sky in this one, I can tell. There. That little blender brush, though, it's so soft you can go right over the paint without mixing it all up. There we go. I want to just feather those edges out till they're very quiet. You almost don't see them. They just sort of disappear. There we are. About like half. That's all we need. That's all we need. Mm. Already that's looking like a pretty nice little sky. I like to do skies like this. They're a lot of fun. A little more white. I'm not stopping yet. I think we'll just put another happy little cloud in there. Maybe it comes around like that. Goes off. You make a decision. In your world, you decide where everything lives. The clouds, the sky, little birds. There. I'm just going to put another cloud here. You know, in one of the earlier shows, a couple of the earlier shows, I showed one of my little baby squirrels that I'm raising right now. And we've had so many people write and say, I want to see him again. So I'm going to put up a little bit of footage here and let you just check out my little squirrel. This is the one we call Peapod Junior, because he sort of likes to live in my, in my shirt, too. Yeah. Isn't he a mess? I love these little rascals. They're so much fun to feed and to, to play with and to work with. It creates a whole new awareness of nature when you work with little animals like this. Probably in every town nearly in the country, there are people who work with injured and orphaned animals. And this is, this is where I get all these little animals that you see. I try to work with these people and help them out. Any way I can make their life a little easier. And they allow me to share just what you see right there. Some of God's little creatures. Isn't he adorable? By the time you see this, he'll be living out in my backyard. Because we do not, we do not keep these little animals. These are wild animals. And they're meant to live outside. And that's where we put them. But hopefully he'll hang around the backyard and allow me to continue to, to share his world for a little while. Look at there. He's not the neatest eater in the world, is he? But that's okay. Every year I raise several of these little rascals and turn them loose. There. Just gives you a good feeling. All I'm doing is just putting in some clouds while you're watching little Peapod Jr. there. All right. He wouldn't share either. You notice that? That's totally his. None of that's for me. Okay. I think we have... We about had a little sky finish. I hope you enjoy watching those little critters because they really are fun. 
and they're very important in my life. So I took a little touch of the phthalo blue and just added right there. Just a little touch. All right. Now, I have a little piece of masking tape here just to protect my horizon line. But that's the only reason it's there. A little touch more of the phthalo blue. I already have white on this little blender, so they'll just sort of mix together. Isn't that a wild sky? Mm. I bet there's a storm coming here. All right. Now then, I get to wash the old brush again. That's really all I wanted to do. We wash our brushes, as you know, in odorless paint thinner. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Okay. I'm going to take off this little piece of masking tape. See, now that way my horizon line is nice and straight and very even. And that was Prussian blue and sap green. I want to add just a touch more where the piece of tape was. There. Just adding a little bit more like that. Okay, we're in business. I thought today, let's play a little bit. Seascapes give some people a, a hard time. They're not the easiest thing in the world to paint. So let's make a, let's make a seascape that's a little easier to do today. We're going to use the small knife a lot. And I'm going to take a little roll of paint. And I'm going to start out by just figuring out basically here where my major wave will be. I want one big crasher wave. It comes right up here. Maybe it bends over like that. And... Maybe there's a little deuter there, and off sort of like it. That's really about all we're looking for. That's just a shape to tell us where the old big wave's gonna live in our world. And back here, maybe there's a little wave that lives there. Putting a lot of pressure on the knife, bending it. Bending, if you don't get too crazy, it's, the knife's pretty strong, you're not gonna break it. Now, I will take a number three fan brush. I'm gonna use the small one today. And very gently, I just want to blend that back a little bit. Just enough, just enough to do that. See? We don't want to lose. It's the dark area right here that's important. Don't lose it. Hang on to it. It's a good friend. Just blend a little bit of that color back. Just a little. See? Don't get too crazy. I know. I know. It gets, it gets nice. And a little bit in here, a little bit there. Then, tell you what, while I have that little brush going, I'll take a little more titanium white. And back in here, I'm just going to put some little indications of some little strokes that will make it look like little distant waves far, far away. <clears throat> Something about like so. We're not too worried about these. We'll sort of put them together with the liner brush and we put detail in there. That's really about all we need. It gives the indication that something's happening back here. Other than that, I'm not too worried. There. Now then, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. We'll take some more little titanium white. And I'm getting a little roll of paint on the knife, right down on the edge. It lives way out there. Now we said that this water was gonna come around here like this. So all we're gonna do, just touch and give a little pull. Give a little pull, like that. There. That's going to be the top of that wave. Grab my little number three fan brush again. And I'm just going to barely touch this and give it a little tiny pull over like so. And that's about all I'm going to do to that. Now, we need an eye in the wave. Or as it's commonly known, the pretty part. So we'll take a little titanium white and go right up in here and just begin rubbing with a knife. Just rub it like that. See, that's all you have to do is rub it. It'll get as smooth. I'm gonna take a little bit of the cadmium yellow, a little white, and I'm gonna put a little touch right in here and rub that. There, looks like sunlight just zipping right through there. Just like so. But already, see it's beginning to give the impression of a wave. It's that easy. Okay. 
take a little phthalo blue, alizarin crimson, proportionally much, much more crimson, much more crimson than the blue. All right, let's grab a little white and put it in there so I can see what color I've got. Ooh, I like that. I like that color, nice one. Sometimes it just works, wonderful. And we'll come right in here and we'll put a little, little indication, maybe a shadow there and just rub it in. It's gonna mix with that color that's on the canvas automatically, automatically. This old crasher wave shh, goes right up here and breaks the horizon. There we go. Just splash it up in the sky. About like that. We don't know where it's going yet. We'll make that decision in a little while. Take a little phthalo blue, a little bit of white. There. And we'll just make a nice bluish color, maybe a little darker than that. About like that. That's pretty nice. I like that color. All right. <laughs> there. Now we have several different values we can use. And we can begin thinking about maybe there's a little duder that comes right there. I know. That didn't make any sense yet. Watch, watch, watch. Watch. It'll come. It'll come. Here comes the water. Shh. Coming right down. We can just put all kinds of little things in there. Just blend them together. This knife will do fantastic things if you just give it a chance. Just rub it. I like to do entire paintings using nothing but the knife when I'm at home. But that's hard to do on television with the limited time frame that we have. But you can do the entire painting with nothing but the knife. You really can. All right. Take a little bit of the titanium white. Just want to make it look like that water's beginning to fall over. Something about like so. Now then, let's take, I'm just using the knife here, and I'm just going to touch it. Let that water splash and churn and crash as it comes over. Just boom. Make little sound effects when you do this. It really helps. Get you in the mood. Think about being, think about a day at the ocean. Shoot, if you don't live close to the ocean, then just sort of imagine it. Painting is, is imagination anyway. It's imagination that you can see there. But that easy, you can make a, the indication of just a happy little foam wave crashing, churning. There it comes. All right, we need something for that to be, be a hit known there. Let's take some of our browns, Van Dyke, Dark Santa, mixed together. Throw us some black in there too. I want it dark. Maybe, yeah. Let's put us a nice rock right here. There it is. Just a big old happy rock. Gotta have something for all this to splash on. There I go making a noise again. I'm sorry, I get carried away making noises. If you was to record me at home when I'm painting by myself, you, people would think you're nuts. I sit around all by myself in a big old empty house and make weird little noises. <laughs> but they say, you know, you know that Bob, he's a painter. They, painters are sort of strange, so, so it's okay. Take a little black, a little white, a little brown, mixed all together. There. Now I wanna come right in here, and I'm just still just using the knife. Just gonna sort of put the indication of a stone here. Have to keep wiping the knife off. Just wipe off the excess paint. Then just by just by rubbing it, you can begin to create the illusion of all kinds of things happening here. And painting is nothing more than games of illusion. That's really all it is. On a flat surface, you make it look like there's depth and dimension. That's what it's all about. We'll take a little white, a little touch of the phthalo blue, not much. And very gently, very gently, just begin bringing these two together. 
just just churning and fighting and crashing and carrying on there. There we are. Something about like that. All right. Now, let's find, there's one. I'm gonna take a little Indian yellow, some white, and just mix them together. Indian yellow is a very bright yellow. Let's go up in here. Maybe, 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 shoot, right there. We'll put some reflection right in the water. About like that. Now, if you start in the brightest area and work out, automatically it'll pick up that color underneath and get darker and darker as it works out. A little more color, lightest area, and then we work outward, 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 outward. That easy. See, it gets darker and darker automatically. Now we'll go across, just like we're making reflections, because that's what it is. It's just a reflected color. Now already it looks wet. Like it. Now then, time to start having some fun here. Take a little white, a little blue, and maybe firm pressure right along in here. Like that. Firm, firm pressure. There we go. Really get in there and work it. But isn't that a neat way to make a little seascape? And as I say, if you've had trouble with seascapes before, this might be the answer to your problem because it's very simple. It works. Put another little duder out there. Firm pressure. I want that nice edge to be there. And you need to wipe the knife continually to get the paint off. There. Running around something like that. Of these little duders, we can bring them. See, it's up to you. You make the decisions. You make the decisions wherever you want them to be. All right. Just all kinds of little things happening in here. You can pick up a little of that color and bring it down. It creates the way the water is going to flow. All right. I get carried away when I do these because I like them. I like to do these little rascals. And I like to paint with a knife. There's, it's really, I, as I say, when you're at home, you can paint entire paintings using nothing but the knife. Try it. You'll like it. I'm going to take a little more of the blue and white. Once again, our little roll of paint. I want one more of those little duders. It lives right here something about like it. So it just goes right on off the canvas. Gives it a little more depth. And put a few little things. Now we can take our little fan brush and very gently just grab that and pull it back right across the, the water there. See? Just pull it back. Just grab that color. That needs to go pretty straight. You don't want your water to look like it's running up side of a mountain or something. It needs to go fairly straight. All right. But isn't that a super simple little way of making a very effective seascape? I think you'll like that one. Try it. And I'd love to hear from you, you know. If you have time, drop me a line. Send me a photograph of your paintings. My gosh, we get some of the most beautiful photographs people are doing all over the country. Marvelous, marvelous paintings. I want to brighten that so it stands out. Looks like the water's coming over a little bit. There, a little bit in there. It's up to you. You decide where all these little rascals live. We can splash a few little more things up in here. Don't want to get this too crazy. Up in here. There. All right. As I mentioned, we could take the script liner brush, a little paint thinner. I'm using white with a touch of, just a touch of phthalo blue in it. And here and there and there. You could get in here and put in some details. Just put in all kinds of little waves and things that make your seascape really 
special, fantastic looking. But that easy. Just thin the paint down with paint thinner, and then it'll slide right over here. There, see? Once again, I think this is one of the easiest seascapes we've ever come up with. It's a lot of fun to do, and you really can do this one. We'll have a little do it just comes right down the wave there. Anywhere you want them. There we go. And you can put as much detail in your world as you want. Or you can stop right there, you know, right where it was. Take a little of that lavender color. And I just want to highlight right around the edge of that. That little dark line will help set everything off. And even under here, if you put a dark line, it'll make it project up. Just put a dark line under all those little things right like that. And I think we'll take a little red and we'll sign this one. I'm going to call it finished. Hope you've enjoyed this little seascape. It's a lot of fun and I'd love to see what you're doing. If you do have time, send me a picture. Until next time, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless, my friend. <laughs> hey, welcome back. I'm sitting here playing with a couple of the cutest little characters that God has ever made. These are a couple of little baby flying squirrels. Tiny little rascals. They're about six weeks old. Look at that. Aren't they some of the most precious little things you've ever seen? There, turn around here so we can see you. We call them slim and trim. There. Say hello, guys. As I say, these are little baby flying squirrels. They might be the most numerous squirrel there is, but you don't see them very often because they're nocturnal and they hide all the time. Okay, guys, you want to sit in my pocket while we do this? Huh? Here, you jump right in there. That's what's so great about it. You can just put them in your pocket. There, we'll let you sit right in there. These are little baby pocket squirrels, too. Tell you what, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done up here. I have my standard old 18 by 24 inch pre-stretched double prime canvas, and I've just covered it with a very thin coat of liquid white. So it's all wet and slick and it's ready to go. And I thought today we'd just do a fantastic little painting. It's very easy and think you'll enjoy it. Let's start with a little Prussian blue on the old two inch brush. Just a little bit, something like so. And we'll go right up in here and using our little crisscross strokes, we'll just do a quick little sky. Just, just like so. Now, the paint is continually mixing with a liquid white and automatically, automatically, it'll get lighter and lighter in value as we work down toward the horizon. And as you know, in the landscape, that's exactly what we're looking for. There we are. Something about like that. Okay. Now we'll take a little bit more of the Prussian blue and let's just put a little bit on the bottom. We might end up with a little water down here. I'm not really sure yet. We'll make that decision in a little while. Right now we don't have to make any big decisions. But just in case, just in case, we'll have something like Hope you like those little flying squirrels. I think they're sort of, they're sort of neat. They are beautiful little creatures. Okay. And I borrowed those from the bird lady here in Muncie who's taking care of them and raising them. Her name is Diana Schaefer. And she works with all kinds of animals. And when we come here to do the show, she loans them to me sometimes so I can, so I can share them with you. So we'll have to send her a thank you card. There we are. And just beat the devil out of it. I thought maybe today we'd do some, let's do some big mountains. Great big old beautiful mountains. I'm going to start with midnight black. Midnight black. And a little touch of Prussian blue in it, but mostly midnight black. Cut off a little roll of paint. Let's go right up in here. And we have to make our first major decision. Maybe the old mountain lives right there. We'll start out Put a little peek in there. It doesn't matter. Just sort of make a decision in your world. Put them in wherever you think they should live. Then that's exactly where they should live. Maybe something right along in there. I'll tell you what, let's have some fun. Let's take a little bit of the titanium white and just do something like that. Just begin. Maybe 
I know, I know. Maybe there's some, like a glacier up in here. That easy. We'll begin laying that in. Then we can put a few little highlights on the mountain. Just like so. There. And big decisions we'll make later. I'm going to take a little white, put a little black with it, make a gray color. And with that gray color, I'm going to take, and with that, we'll add a few little highlights here and there on the old mountain. Just a few little things. Maybe there's one there. We'll let it come right down to that glacier. There we go. Just put a highlight here and there. Hmm. This looks like some of the mountains that, that live in Alaska where I used to live. There. Something about like that. Back to our black, and we'll start right in here. See, and we'll sort of just make a little bowl shape in that mountain to, to hold that glacier in so it doesn't get away. Sometimes them rascals will get away from you. There. That easy. I like big old mountains like this. As I say, I lived in Alaska for a long time, and you see sites like this just about on a daily basis. And I think when God made Alaska, he was having one of his better days. It is the most gorgeous country. Hmm. I get excited just thinking about it. There. Somebody told me I should work for the Department of Tourism in Alaska as much as I talk about it. That's true. I just think it was beautiful. There we are, back to my black. And let's come right up in here and maybe, shoot, we'll get a little crazier. It doesn't matter. It's our world. We can do it any way that we want to. Put a dooter there. Maybe a little something in here. And off we go. Okay. A little bit of our gray and white. Put a few little highlights on here. I don't want a lot of highlights on this. Just a few. And maybe out here have a few little highlights that live right up on top of this mountain. Sort of bring that together. Shoot, we're in business. As I say, though, these are really fun mountains to do. Try some of these. So often we just do the mountains that have snow on them, but do mountains that have big glaciers in them. There. A little bit more of the titanium white, and we'll just let this just drip right around the base of those mountains. That easy. No pressure. No pressure at all. Just sort of let it float right around there. Maybe it comes right on down in here somewhere. And let's take our two inch brush. And I'm gonna begin tapping. I wanna create the illusion of mist down at the base here. The illusion of mist, a little white on the brush. We'll make some big misty areas that just float right there. All right, something about like that. Just bring them all together. Mm. A little more of the titanium white. I'm just using titanium white right on the corner of the brush. And we'll make all those beautiful misty areas very lightly, very lightly. You can blend it, bring it together. Shoot, that's quite a little mountain we've got there today. I like him. Maybe a little mist right in here too. It's a nice way of cleaning up the foots on this mountain. Okay, now then, I just want to wash the brush. As you know, we wash our brushes with just odorless paint thinner. <laughs> and beat the devil out of them. Okay, my two little guys are still here, by the way. I'm going to take some black, some Prussian blue. Be right back, get a little sap green. Maybe my crimson or two. Just touch. Let's go up in here. Let's have, in our world, maybe maybe a little foothill that lives back here and it's got trees and bushes growing on it. All those happy little things. There. Just to push all that back. All right. And you can do this with a two inch brush or you could do it with a fan brush. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Two inch brush was handy and it works wonderfully. Now. Grab the old knife, 
mix up some color here. Let's have Prussian blue, black. Get a little bit of that phthalo green. A little alizarin crimson and some brown Van Dyke type. Okay, let's wipe the knife off. Try a fan brush. And we'll load it full of color. A lot of paint on A lot of paint. Let's go up in here. And maybe back here in our world, there's a few little evergreen trees. They're just poking their heads up. There's one. And we'll give him a friend that lives right about there. It doesn't matter. You decide how many or how few trees live in your world. But not like it. Okay, maybe there's one there too. Now sometimes when you're painting over a lot of paint like this, it's sort of difficult to make it stick. If you have that problem, add the least little touch of paint thinner to your brush. Doesn't take much, just a little, and then it'll stick right on top of all that white or whatever color you happen to have up there. Always refer back to our golden rule. Thin paint will stick to a thick paint. Thin to thick. Now, I'm gonna grab another old two inch brush here. We'll go right into a little bit of that color and then right into cadmium yellow. I wanna make various shades of green, but I want them pretty dark. Pretty dark. Okay, let's go right up in here. We'll just use that same brush and I'm just gonna tap in the indication of a few highlights on some of the larger trees that live back here in our world. There. Okay, maybe a little a little Indian yellow. You decide, whatever you want. But I want to keep them fairly dark. I don't want them to get too bright, They're too far away. There we go, a little bit more in there. Isn't that neat? And you can do this. You really and truly can do this. I know, I know. You're saying I could never paint, never draw a straight line. You can. This is one style of painting it is for every person. I've never seen anyone who couldn't do this. There. There's even a lady in Boston who paints this method, and she's blind. If she can do it, whoo, anybody can do it, because she's wonderful. She is wonderful. I'm going to take just a small amount of titanium white on a clean. I've got another, another little two-inch brush here. I want to create a a little bit of mist floating down here at the base of this. This is just straight titanium white. Just tapping it right in there. Have a good time. About like that. See? But it'll help create that illusion that it's very misty. Maybe even a cloud fell out of the sky and it's living down here now. Well, it could happen. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Can't ever tell. There we go. Take a little bit of this dark color. What do they say? You don't have to be crazy to do this, but it helps. And let's go back up in here. Maybe there's some little grassy areas that come right out of there. Don't want to cover up all the mist that we made. That mist is a good friend. I want to save it. I want to save it. Just happy little grassy areas. Maybe we'll have water. If you want water, all you have to do is just pull down a reflection and go across, and almost instantly you have water. Now then, shoot, we're getting crazy here. Maybe there's a little bush that lives right there. About like that. Take the two inch brush that has the, the greens on it, the little highlight colors, and we can highlight that rascal a little bit. That easy. Okay, now, I'm gonna dip the brush into the least little amount of paint thinner. Once again, if it's a little bit thinner, then it'll just go right on top of there without any problem. All right, just tap a little color into the bristles, and off we go. I just wanna put the indication of some little grassy areas here. Too far away to have much detail, but a little bit, a little bit. Just some happy little things that are living right there. You decide where they are, how many they are, where they live. Okay, maybe about in there. And once in a while, maybe we'll pick up a, a 
little darker color. Now you can lift this sometime just to create the illusion of little things that are growing back in there. Little upstanding rascals. Because they exist. You have them in nature. All right. Take a little of the liquid white, pull it out as flat as I can get it cut across. Then we can come back in here. And we'll put in a little water line. Just a little water line. It's just a light area between a couple of darks to break it up. Something like so. There we are. Now what happens if you make one that you don't care for? It's hard to get rid of. Let's make one intentionally. There's one I don't like. Now if you do that, take your brush, grab it, and just pull straight down. See? It just works right out. Don't worry about it. There. You know, in some of the series a long time ago, we did shows that, did a couple of shows that just showed how to correct mistakes. Maybe we'll do some more of those. I did that because I've got several letters recently asking what happens if you, if you do a water line that you're not happy with. How can I fix it? Now you know. It's one of the easiest things are to fix. Because we don't make mistakes. We absolutely don't. We have, we have a happy accident every so often. But that's it. That is it. Scratching a few little sticks and twigs and arms and legs on some of these trees and shoot, we're in business. Let's take, let's take, you guys still in there? Yeah, I see you. Some blue and some black. A little more of the thalo green. A little crimson. Absolutely adore those little flying squirrels. They have to be some of the cutest creatures God's ever made. They are precious. We'll see if Diana will let me take these home back to Florida with me, but I know she won't. It's a good thought, though. <laughs> I'm going to load a lot of the dark color into the brush. Something like so. Let's make a big evergreen. Whee, you ready? How big? Real big? That big? It goes right off the canvas. See, maybe there's a little bit of the trunk showing right there. Got a little naked part. You can do that. You can do that. There he comes. Big old heavy tree. Strong tree. And in here, we could care less. We'll separate all this with highlights. We don't care. The only thing you're worried about is the basic shape, basic design of the old tree. You know me, I think everybody needs a friend. So we'll give him a little friend that lives right here. That's his friend. They get along well together. What a view. They can look out over here at these beautiful mountains with the snow and the glaciers. Mm. I want to live there too. I'm going to take a big brush. That's too slow. Load it full of color. What the heck. Maybe there's a big old tree that lives here and he's got a friend there. Just make a decision. Just make a decision. As I say over and over, each of us will see nature through different eyes. And you should paint what you see. Hmm. Put a big one there. And whatever you feel, that's what you should paint. Because a hundred years from now, somebody will look at your painting and it'd say, boy, he was having a good day today. He really felt good. Take a little white, a little dark sienna, mix them together, maybe a little more. You can put a little Van Dyke in there too. Ooh, pretty color. Little roll of paint. And let's go up in here, put a little indication here and there. You don't have to put the whole thing in, of tree trunks. It's just indications. Just a few little things. Don't put too many, because you're not going to see the entire tree trunk. I'm going to make out a blue spruce. In this series, I've made several blue spruce. I'm going to take some white mixed with liquid white, a little touch of the thalo blue. I like thalo blue. Isn't that a beautiful color? Mm. All right. Let's go right up in here. Now, with that thalo blue, let's just go right along in here and put the indication in of a few highlights. Dark 
darker, darker, darker down toward the bottom. And this little tree says, give me some highlights too. So we will. The little squirrels have to live up here in these trees. Now, we'll just take a one inch brush, what the heck, dip it into the liquid white, a little bit of that dark color, pull it in one direction, one direction only. One direction, load a lot of color. Let's go up here. And with that, we can come back in here and we can begin putting highlights on all these little bushes and trees. Do one little bush and tree at a time though. Don't get greedy. I know, little yellow ochre. I know, sometimes it gets working good and it's hard to stop with just one. Take your time, take your time. You don't have a mean old director at home that's on your case, but you can take your time. There. Maybe a little touch of the bright red right there on the end of that one to make it look like maybe some little red flowers. They're just living right out here. Okay, a little touch of the paint down grass some sap green. Some nice sap green. Mm, that's a little bush. I like to paint bushes and trees. I think I told you the story in one of the earlier shows in a different series that Years ago, I studied portraits, and after a long time, my portrait teacher took me aside one night, and he said, Bob, i got to tell you the truth. He said, I want you to go paint bushes and trees, because that's where your heart is, and leave portrait painting to someone else. <laughs> and I have. I've taken his advice, and I get along much better with bushes and trees. There. And playing with little squirrels. I like all these little animals. They're my friends. My house looks like a zoo sometime. I have so many of them. And then as soon as they get big enough to make it on their own, off they go. But you wouldn't believe the menagerie of animals that lives around my house that we've turned loose over the years. And they come back and I'm, I'm soft touch. I always have food out there for them. And that's okay. As long as I have food, they will. Let's take some Van Dyke, some dark sienna, mix them together. Get a little roll of paint on the knife. We gotta have a way to get up here. And maybe there's a big trout lives out here in this river. We might wanna come catch him. But I think everybody should, when they catch a fish, they should just put a Band-Aid on him, wish him well, and put him back in the water. Come back and catch him again. It's getting hard to find big fish anymore. They've all been caught. So anytime I catch one, I just sort of put him back in the water and wish him well. Tell him I'll see him another day. A little brown and white. Off we go. A little roll of paint again. Barely touch. Just graze. Just graze like that. Touch. There. Come back with our little brush that we were making bushes with. Maybe I'll put a little more liquid white on it. All right. Make it very thin. Grab a little sap green. There. Then we can go up in here, we can begin picking out little individual bushes and trees that live right here. There they come. The path goes behind that one right there. We don't know where it goes now. It just sort of sneaks away. Sneaks away. Maybe there's a, another one here. Like that. Wherever you want them. Hi guys. A little squirrel just looked out of my pocket at me here. There we go. They are absolutely precious. I'm gonna have to talk some more trash to Diana and see if I can take one home. I doubt if they'd let me get on the airplane with it. You wanna to go to Florida? Huh? No. Okay. It's a good thought anyway. Okay, a couple little ones here just to sort of lay the path down into the painting. That's all we're really doing at this point. About like that. All right. And we could take the little script liner brush, put some paint thinner on it, and make the paint very thin. Almost, almost the consistency of ink, but not quite. Turn the bristles in there to bring it to a nice sharp point. Okay, let's go up in here. And here and there and there and here, we can put in the indication of a few little sticks and twigs. You decide where they live in your world. However many you want, that's exactly the right number. 
exactly the right number. Take a knife, just a clean knife, and you can scrape in as many sticks or twigs as you want. Like that. I think with that, we about got a completed painting. Let's take a little bright red, a little paint thinner. I think we're ready for a signature on that one. So we'll just uh, make the paint good and thin. And we'll come right up in here and we'll sign that little rascal. Really hope you've enjoyed this little painting. Try these mountains. They're fantastic, a lot of fun to do, and you can do them. And after you finish, if you have time, take a photograph and send us. All of us here at the station would love to see your results. Until then, we'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting, and God bless, my friend. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd do a painting. It's very simple. I think you'll enjoy it. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you'll need to paint along with this. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got up here today. I have my plain old 18 by 24 inch double prime pre-stretch canvas and I've just covered it with a very thin coat of liquid white. That's basically all. We use 18 by 24 inch canvas, but you use any size that you like when you're doing yours. I thought I'd start with a little, just a little two inch brush today. I'm going to tap a little bit of Indian yellow into it. Don't need a lot of color. Something about like so. Let's go up in here, and maybe right here we'll do that. That's all there is to it. Okay, got that one finished. Is that easy? I'm going to go into a little bit of cad yellow. Same way. Just use a little two-inch brush. We don't have to even do anything. Just go around the edges. Without cleaning it, I'm going to touch a little bit of the yellow ochre. There. Just working the yellows out here. A little more of the yellow ochre. Come right on around. Something about like that. If you put two eyes and a big smiley face in there, it'd look like little orphan Annie. There we are. Okay. Sort of blend those together. And that's all we're looking for today. Something about like that. Yeah. Still without cleaning the brush, I'm gonna touch a little bit of the lizard crimson. Don't need a whole bunch. And just begin blending that together. I want to make a I want to make a sky that looks like there's a maybe the sun's here and it's shining out and it's a beautiful day. We'll do this painting mostly in brown tones. Sometimes it's gorgeous to do paintings in just one tone. There we are. Mm. All right, now then I want to mix up a color. I like brown made from sap green, and alizarin crimson. That's one of my favorite colors. There we are, and I'm gonna mix it a little bit to the reddish side, just a small amount. Normally we don't worry about mixing color too well. Today, I wanna to mix this pretty good because I don't want any green streaks up in the sky. Okay, that ought to do it. Wipe the old knife. It will go right into that brown that we made there. And we can go up in here, and let's begin using that. See, it It sort of matches all this. It sort of works together. It's really a gorgeous brown. All right, and some on the other side. Just right in there. And then we'll finish the canvas up. We'll just use a little Van Dyke brown. A little bit on the other side. And we're ready to wash the old brush. As you know, if you've painted with me before, that's really the fun part of this whole procedure. It's just washing the brush. This is the way, it's the way I get even with everybody here in the studio that picks on me. All right. <laughs> you, can, you can certainly change the decor of a room very rapidly if you're not careful. I suggest when you do this at home, you get a little device called a brush beater rack that fits down the bottom of a waste paper basket. It allows you to do all this without, without ruining a happy marriage. Because you can certainly do that in a heartbeat if you, if you cover the living room with paint. I'm just blending all these colors together, like so. All right, then I'm gonna wash the brush again. I'm really just looking for excuses to wash the brush. There we are. Now then, I wanna brighten that a little more. So I'll go right into titanium white. Let me just put a little on the two inch brush. Go right up in here, start in the lightest area 
and begin working outward. We want this to be the lightest, brightest part of this whole painting, right here. There, and just begin blending that outward. Now you can do this several times to achieve a desired lightness. You can make it as light or as bright as you want. But once you get out here in these dark colors, I suggest that you clean the brush before you bring it back into the center. There we go. Something about like so. Once again, you can make it as light as you want it when you do your painting. Or leave it as dark as you want. It's really an individual thing. Now, very lightly. I just want to take out the brush strokes. Now then, if you want to put the indication, knock off the excess paint, if you want to put the indication of a little sun, we can do a little finger painting right there. And just, just take your finger and make a little round sun. Those square suns sort of bother people. Make it sort of round. Of course, then you have to clean your finger and you beat it against the easel the same way. All right and just barely caress it. And the indication of a little sun will remain right there in your sky, that easy. See there, it's all you need. Okay, let's have some fun. We're still using the same old brush, a little white, a little bit of that brown color that we made out of the sap and the lizard mixed together. Maybe in our world, we back in the distance, there's some little foothills that live back here. So let's do that. All you have to do is decide where they live in your world and begin tapping them in. You know, when you paint, tell little stories. It makes painting easier. It makes you understand why things work in your painting. Shoot, sometimes I get carried away and maybe talk about the old trapper that lived in the woods, maybe fell in the river, just crazy things like that. But it gives you a reason for an old abandoned cabin being there or something like that. But make up little stories. I know, I know, you're gonna say your friends and relatives will sort of laugh at you, stand around talking to yourself, painting, but that's okay. That's okay. Now then, I'm gonna lift gently upward just to make it look like little trees are growing on those hills far away. Short little strokes, tiny little strokes. There, just a little bit, don't need a lot. Just a little bit, there we are. Maybe I'll even take a little of the titanium white. I'll put the least little touch of Indian yellow in it. And just here and there, touch a little bit so it just stands out a little. You can lighten it up a little. There, lift upward. But that's all I'm looking for. Just enough to make it stand out like the lights zinging across there. There, that's all we want. Okay. Now, well, you'll use this little number three fan brush. Take a little white, a little more of that brown. I want it to be a little bit darker than what we have up there, but not a great deal yet. All right, let's go up in here. Maybe, maybe there's a little stand of trees that live right here. Little group of trees. Happy little family of trees right there. I don't know, you decide. In your world, you put trees wherever you want them, as many as you want. And we can come back with our old two inch brush. And we just tap a little bit. That easy. And create a whole nother plane in our world. And we'll lift up, sort of bring it together, make it work. That's all there is to it. And back to our white with a little bit of the Indian yellow in it. And we can begin just showing some little dooters that climb up the hill like this. This will just show different planes in your hill. And that's all we're trying to do. Something about like that, lift it up. There. And maybe over in here, it just sort of disappears. We don't know where it goes. Don't know that we even care. Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna cover all this up with that nice brown we made. There. As I say, I want this painting to have a sort of a brown flavor to it. I love this color. And I like paintings that are almost monochromatic. Just one basic color. All right. I'll tell you what, sometimes 
Sometimes you have to get a little crazy. Let's take a little bit of that white and get a little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife there. Let's go up in here and maybe we'll just make the indication just by doing this. It's all you have to do. Just like this. Just enough so that it separates. And we can begin putting little things like it. And if you, if you just rub that very hard and keep it pretty level, when this is all done, it'll look like, well, watch, it'll look like there's a little, maybe a little river back here somewhere. But it's far away. We don't want a lot of detail in it. Far, far away. Just something like that. And we'll come along and we'll put something in the foreground. But maybe there's some little rapids back here that it's slowly running over. And it's just to give an indication. Too far away to have a lot of detail in it. All right. We don't know where it goes back here. Don't know that we even care. Doesn't matter in our world. Something about like that. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to grab a clean, clean two-inch brush. I'm going to take that same brown that I made, but this time I'm going to add a little bit of midnight black to it. I want it to start getting very dark. We're getting into the foreground now, and we need to get much darker, but we load it the same way. Let's go up in here. Okay, bravery test, maybe. Let's put some nice dark color in here very dark. You need dark in order to show light. And that's all we're putting this in here for right now. So the only reason we're putting it in here. There, we just make a nice little hill. See, and it pushes all that back very, very far. That easy. And you can just decide where you want this to live. Now you could really put this in any old way. I suggest you practice this tapping because we're going to put grass on top of this and it gives you a chance to practice those strokes and anytime you can practice it'll make your life so much easier and besides that it's more fun than just just painting it on there with a paint roller all right that's coming along pretty good there something about like that that's really all we're looking for it's just a dark area then we'll come back, again, putting all the beautiful little lights in there. All right. That's interesting. This is the 30th series of The Joy of Painting. Shoot, there's nearly 400 shows now. And if you hadn't got a chance to see them all in your area, give the station you're watching this on a call, because they're available to them. And if you'd like to see them, let them know. That's the only way they know that you're interested. There we go. Something about like that. Now then, going back to my old two-inch brush, I'm going to take some sap green, a little bit of the cad yellow, yellow ochre, all those beautiful little colors, just tap. Now then, back in here, I want the indication of a little bit of grassy area that lives right along in here, something about like that. But just tap. All you have to do is tap. Just tap. You decide. About like that. See how you can make all those little things? And the more you tap it, the more it'll mix with a color that's already on the canvas, and it'll get darker and darker automatically. Automatically. You don't even have to worry about it. If you want it to be bright, don't tap much. If you want it to be darker, just get in there and tap the devil out of it. There. All right. Now, let's get crazy. <laughs> you painted with me before, you know I really like trees. Let's take some Van Dyke Brown, Lizard Crimson, and Midnight Black, mix them together. All right, let me wipe the old knife. Let's grab, I'm using a number six fan brush this time. Number three would work okay, doesn't matter. Whichever one you happen to pick up, load it full of color. Maybe up here on the top of our little hill lives, yeah, you guessed it, happy little tree. Right there. I like little trees. And they're some of the nicest people in the country. There, see? There he lives. I don't want him to be lonely. 
Maybe there's a little family up here that lives together. What a magnificent view to sit up here and look at all day. Mm. I'm envious. We don't have a little one right there. There we got a whole family. Three little trees on the hill. Now then. I just want to scratch in the indication of a little tree trunk here and there. Something about like that. That's all we need. Take that same brown color, maybe add a little bit of the bright red to it. Not much, just a little bright red. There, maybe even a little touch of titanium white, just to get it to stand out a little bit. I don't want a lot of highlights on these. Yeah, that's plenty. Just enough so that you get the feeling there are some highlights, but they don't distract. There, this one next. You have to decide which tree lives in the foreground, which tree lives back. I think this one's right in the front. So we do him last, so he's in front. Hope that shows up. Now we can go back to our brush that has the sap green, a little Indian yellow, all those colors, all the different greens, and we can begin bringing this together. A few little duders back here. But isn't that neat? So you've got a little family of trees that sit here. They look out over this beautiful view. Mm. It is gorgeous to, I'd like to live in a place. Well, I tell you what, why not? If I was going to live here, I'd need a house. I'm not very good at sleeping on the dirt. So let's come right up in here, and let's build us a little, maybe this little house there. We'll just scrape this out of basic shape, something like so. I want it right in front of these trees. We'll take a little Van Dyke, a little dark sienna mixed together, and let's just paint us in a quick little house. This is just a happy little house up here on the hill. Gives us a nice roof. Got to have a roof to keep the water out. There we go. Something like that. Now, when you do yours, maybe you want to have a house that's different. Maybe you don't want to have a house. Maybe you want to have a two-story house. You can do that. Anything that you want to do. Painting gives one almost total freedom, at least on this piece of canvas. A little brown and white. No pressure. I want this to be sort of an old raggedy house. There. As we mentioned earlier, doing stories and stuff. Maybe there's a trapper that lived here and he went down to the river one day to check his beaver trap. And maybe he fell in. Who knows? Now we could do a cabinectomy. In other words, just cut it off. Get it the way we want it. Better have a door in our cabin. It's easier to get in and out if you got a door. It's hard climbing through the window sometimes. There we go. Take a little dark color. Put the indication of a few boards and stuff on there if you want them. And you could have made a log, ca log cabin just as easy. Let's take a little red, a little white, a little dark sand in it. Let's see, maybe, yeah. Maybe this got a little red roof on there. It's not in too good a shape either. Not in too good a shape. The old shingles about fell off. It's got some holes in it. Yeah, a few little highlights right up here on top where the sun's really zinging across the top. A few little duders down the side here. So it stands out. There. Got us a little cabin. All right, now we can go back to our brush with a grass color on it, and we can begin putting in all kinds of little grassy areas like this, right up here by the trees. <laughs> These trees remind me of my little squirrel. That'd be a good place for him to live. I want to show you my little squirrel one more time. Shoot, I've showed him to you a couple times in this series. He's one of the cutest little devils that you've ever seen. He's Peapod Jr. He likes to live in my pocket. Of course, by the time you get to see this, he'll already be turned loose and he'll be free. Probably living in my backyard and he'll have a little condo back here in a tree. 
I love these little rascals. I raise a bunch of them every year, turn them loose. And they go back and they go back to nature where they where they're supposed to be. So hope you enjoy seeing them little rascals. They're really special to me and, and I like to share them with my friends. Alright. Maybe over in here. Okay, I see a thing happening here. It's a place for a path, right? There. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see it. As you <laughs> I'm sorry to get excited, but as you as you paint, you begin seeing things here. They just sort of happen. Watch here, watch here. We take a little brown, little brown. And maybe you can see the indication of a little path coming out here. Maybe sort of disappears, comes out here, around. It just these things happen. Don't fight them when they happen. Very quickly, you'll learn to use anything that happens in your painting, and it might make some of the most interesting compositions. A little bit of brown and white, just a small amount, and we can highlight a little, just so it stands out here and there. All right, I'll tell you what we need here. Let me find a liner brush. Take a little paint thinner. We need a few little sticks and twigs that live right along in here. Maybe, maybe even uh, 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 something on out in here. Old stick that lives there. Might have been a little tree there that didn't have such a good time. Things got rough on him. Okay, let's get crazy. We got a minute left here. Take a little bit of the midnight black Van Dyke brown mixed together. All right, bravery test. Here it comes. <coughs> gotta make those little weird noises. We got a happy little tree. It lives right there. And he's got a friend too. See? Now we got two little trees to live there. Let's go back to our liner brush. Need a, the paint thinner though to make the paint very thin so it'll literally flow right over the top of the paint that's already on the canvas. Turn the bristles in there. That brings it to a very sharp point there. You can see it. So you just turn them like that. Okay. Now. Now, if it's thin enough, it'll just flow right over the top of that paint without mixing together. About like that. And you can put in all kinds of little arms on your trees. Just wherever you want them. You have to decide, though, like, which one's in front, which one's behind. These are decisions that you make in your world. Gives you a lot of power, doesn't it? There we are. Okay. You know, every day we get letters from fantastic friends all over the country who are picking up a brush and trying this, and they're saying, you told me I could do it, and I never believed it until I tried. Now I have my whole family painting. That's so wonderful when families do things together because this is something you can do with your spouse, with your children, with friends, neighbors, or even people you want to be your friend. It's a good way to meet new people because people who paint just seem to be some of the nicest people. There we are. All kinds of little duders. And you decide, once again, you must make these decisions. We don't want to tell you how many limbs to put on your tree or even what kind of tree to paint because painting is a very individual thing. There. I'm going to take a little white, a little bit of the midnight black, paint thinner. Just mix them together a little bit, black and white, or white and black. And I'm going to come right along here, put a little highlight right on the side of that tree. There, the sun's up here, zing. Just to make him a little sparkler on the side there. Something about like it. All right, go back to our brush. It's got the sap green and all the yellows on it. Tap a little color. And let's just clean up the bottom of his foots here. Bring all that together. Maybe, maybe there's a little baby tree down here. He's gonna take over one day. One day he'll be the big tree, but now he's just a little baby. 
And I think with that, shoot, we about got our finished painting. Take a little paint thinner, a little bit of the bright red, and let's sign this little rascal. Really hope you've enjoyed this little painting. It's a very simple little painting. It'll work for you. If you have time, take a photograph and send to us. All of us here at the station would love to see what you're doing. So until then, from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting and God bless. Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad to see you today. Today is the last show of the 30th series, so I thought today we'd do something that's just a lot of fun. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you'll need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I got up here today. I have my standard old canvas up here today, but I've taken a little bit of black gesso and a natural sponge. I use a natural sponge because it has more design to it than a man-made sponge. And I've just taken and tapped black gesso on the bottom part like so. We've allowed that to dry completely. Then I went back and covered the entire canvas with liquid clear. On top of the clear, on the bottom part only, only on the bottom, the dark part, I've covered that with a very thin mixture of sap green, Prussian blue, and a little Van Dyke brown. And we just put a thin coat of that over the dark area. Other than that, we're ready to go. Let's start with a little two inch brush today and go right into a small amount of the phthalo blue. I like phthalo blue. It is a very warm, nice blue. Mm. Okay, let's go up in here. Maybe in our world here, let's just dance in the indication of a, of a little sky here. We don't care. We just sort of dance it in, let it go. Something about like that. Wherever, wherever. But I'm using little X's, little crisscross strokes. Something about like that. And that's all we're looking for. And I've intentionally left some light areas in here. Just leave them in. Don't, don't just make your sky one old dead color. Shoot, let it, let it have some action in it. But you can always go back, pick up a little titanium white, as I just did, and just paint these in if you want to. But I like to have some little light areas in the sky. It makes it a little more interesting. There we are. Something about like that. And that's really all I'm looking for today. And that's going to be our sky. All right. Go across, just to take out the little brush strokes, bring everything together. Shoot, we're in business. And that easy, we have a... We have a little sky. Let's take, I'm gonna use a little Prussian blue, some sap green, maybe even a little black in it, some brown to dull it. Now, we'll take a little white and put it in there and we'll find out what color we have. Too bright, put a little more brown in it. We just use brown to sort of dull it. Maybe even a little dark sienna. That's what I'm looking for. Just sort of play around till you find a color that you like. I just use that same old brush, it's working pretty good. Tap a little color into it, like this. Maybe in our world, maybe there's a little, maybe there's a big mountain lives right here. There, it just comes right down. I don't know, wherever it wants to go. But little trees and things are growing on this mountain. Maybe, maybe it comes down right over in here too. You decide, there. Just make a decision, drop it in. Just drop it in. Now I've got several brushes going, so, so I don't have to spend all my time just washing brushes. I'm gonna take a clean, dry, two inch brush and tap the base of that severely. Really getting in there and tapping it. I wanna create the illusion of mist right there. See how misty that looks already? It looks like little trees growing right up the side of the hill. Going back to the same brush, same color. Same old color. And maybe, maybe we'll put another little duder right there. You can have as many or as few as you want in your world. Just drop them in. But once again, once again, get the clean brush. And I wanna create that illusion of mist down at the base of this too. Now already, See how that mist separates? That's your separator. That's what keeps them apart. You need that little, that little area in there. It becomes a very good friend. You can even tap a little titanium white on your brush if you wanna, if you wanna increase that. 
and just tap it and it looked like little mist that's just floating around down and whew, nice. I get excited. I've probably painted hmm, 20 or 30,000 paintings in my life and I still get excited when I see it work. And it does work. It does work. All right. Clean off a little spot to work. Let's see. Maybe today, let's take, let's get crazy. Prussian blue, midnight black, some brown, some crimson, and there's some sap green. Most of your dark colors, all your dark colors. It doesn't matter. There. Okay, wipe off the knife. Let's grab, eh, we'll use number three fan brush. Just mix some color on the brush. Load both sides full of color, full of color. Something about like it. Maybe in our world, back in here, lives a little tree right there. See, there he is. These little trees live right in your fan brush. Just sort of, just sort of shake them out. There. Start with just the corner of the brush. Don't go straight in though. I'll show you one more time. Give another one right there. Turn the brush way around and use just the corner. And basically we're using that same corner all the way down the tree. We're just applying more pressure to bend it. To bend it. Mm, get tough with it. And you can just go back, scrape in the indication of some little trunks. And you can turn a few trees into a lot of trees just by doing that. And maybe touch right there and lift up. Just want to lift up. I know that's hard to see, but we'll see it in a second. Looks like little things that are happening way up in there. Now, I'll just take that same brush, wipe off the excess, and I'll go right into the cad yellow. The color that's on there mixed with yellow will make a gorgeous green color. We just load both sides like that. And we can come back, put a few highlights on our little trees, and that way they'll stand out more. There they come. There. And maybe in here, just give it a little upward push. Look like little grassy areas that are growing around the foots of this tree. Something like so. Let's have some fun today. Shoot, let's get crazy already. I'm gonna take uh, some black, some brown mixed together. I'll be right back. I'm going over here and get some paint thinner in this. I wanna make this very thin. So I'm just adding paint thinner. Just dipping into my washer bucket there. Put a little paint thinner on the palette. It's black and brown's all it is. Okay, now I'm going to take some white, a little bit of white, brown, a little black, making the same color, only lighter, and I will also thin it down with paint thinner. So we have two piles of thin paint, dark and light, something like that. Now then, let's take the filbert brush, make sure it's clean. I like to paint some rocks, so let's do it by going through the dark, both sides, then I'll take one side only through the light. See? So I have light on one side, dark on the other. And up in here, yep, now here comes a, see, there lives a whole bunch of little happy rocks right up here. That easy. That easy. You can put rocks wherever you want them, and you can do it in a single stroke. Ready to get crazy? I'm going to take a little, little bit of liquid clear and go into titanium white. I want to thin the color, get a little phthalo blue on there too. But this color is thinner. I put liquid clear with it. And it's time to have some fun. We go on to do, maybe there's a little bit of water. It's just running along right here underneath that. Just having a good time. It's a wonderful day. Just flowing along singing a little song, and then all of a sudden, somebody pulled the stopper out. Oh my gosh, water just fell down. There, see, that easy though. You can create the illusion of a beautiful little waterfall. Isn't that fantastic? There, now, let's take our little, I'm gonna use the little blender brush. It's very soft. We'll create the illusion of some mist down at the base of this. Little blender brush, I'm tapping into a little touch of titanium white. Very soft though, very gentle brush. It'll just create that misty illusion that easy. Very soft. 
Now, let's go back to, eh, we'll just use our little filbert. Same thing, and we'll put dark and light on it. And we need something here. We can just, we need to contain this water so it didn't, didn't get away. So we'll just start here and just decide. Maybe there's a big old rock that lives there. Like that, and we'll let it disappear right down into the mist. There, see, it's that easy. And in our world, maybe, yeah. Big old rock lives right there. He's got the best view of all. And we'll have something over here just to contain it. You just need something to contain your water so it doesn't get away. All right, maybe. You just put these old rocks and stones wherever you think they should live. A little dark color right in there. Then you turn the brush over and just put a little highlight on it. Don't need a lot. Do not need a lot. Something about like that. Okay, let me find... We'll use a fan brush. We have some dark color mixed up here. Load the brush full of the dark color. And it's time to, time to really get crazy here and have some fun. Let's go up here and make some big decisions in our world. You ready? This is your bravery test already. Right there. Big tree. Goes all the way off the canvas. We use the dark first just so we have something to put our light on. It's the only reason it's there. There we go. Just make a basic tree shape here. Big tree. He lives right here next to the waterfall. What a view. He would have it made. I'm gonna add a little paint thinner on my brush just to make this flow over this other paint a little easier and put one right in there too. Maybe we'll have a whole forest today. There, see, here he comes. Big old tree lives there. And maybe we can see a little one that's hiding back in there somewhere. Just a little quiet tree. He didn't get much attention. There's one. There's one. Now down here where the black gesso is, and we have color on top of the black gesso, it doesn't much matter. The gesso does the work for us. It really, this black gesso is great. It makes painting so much easier when you're doing areas that have a lot of dark in them. I don't know why somebody didn't come up with that years ago. It's logical. Alrighty, I want one more tree. I like a lot of trees. He lives right there. Okay, see, but once again, you don't have to mess with the bottom at all. You don't even know. And if you do, don't tell nobody. Shh, secret. Maybe here's one here. Now, see all this stuff here with the black gesso? I'm gonna leave some of that showing through. It'll look like background material. Trees and bushes that are growing far away and you did basically nothing. And it'll drive people crazy trying to figure out how you got all that detail in your painting. Shh, it's our secret. Don't tell them. There, just paint them a painting and give to them. That's better. There we are. You know, that's one thing I hear every day from people all over the country is that these paintings make some of the most fantastic gifts and that friends and relatives appreciate them so much more than something they went out and just bought and handed them. This is something that you created with your own, with your own hand that came out of your imagination. It's special. It is special that you care enough about someone to do a painting for them. And it may be as about as close to immortality as any of us are gonna ever come. Because we know that paintings last, if you take care of them, shoot, they can last hundreds of years. I'm gonna tell you what, let me, uh, I'll go back to the same brush. Put some highlights on them rascals. Just use that same color. We'll go into the yellow ochre, cad yellow. Make a, make a nice green color. Let's go up in here. Now we can come back and we can begin highlighting some of these rascals. Then they'll stand out a little better. You have to make big decisions though. Where do they live? I want it to go right down here and disappear in the mist disappearing tree. Here it comes, here it comes, there's one. You decide. You decide where they are. See? 
disappear, disappear. Darker, darker, darker down in here. Darker, darker. This little tree over here, don't want him left down. Something like so. This one here. Just let it go. And don't want this one to feel neglected. So we'll put something on him too. Darker, darker, darker as it works its way down. And we'll go over to the other side and put a few over here. There. We don't want any jealousy between trees. So we'll take care of all these little rascals. Take care of them all. My little squirrel would like to live out here with all these trees. There we go. Hope you've enjoyed in this series seeing all of our little animals. We've shown Peapod Jr. several times. We even had a little flying squirrel. Had one bird. There. I really do like these little animals. They're so special to me. And I hope you enjoy sharing them with me. There. See down here, we just sort of let it go. Maybe we can't even determine which tree belongs to which. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There. All right. Now then, let's get crazy. Back to my little blender brush. I want to create the illusion that this waterfall is crashing over here and it's making a lot of mist and it's floating up way up here in, this, in amongst all these trees. Now this brush is soft enough that you can literally paint right over the top of paint without destroying or mixing. That's why we came out with a little blender brush. It really, really does work great. Look at there, just sort of lay that mist right in between those. Mm. I get excited when I see this. Used to, I used to work myself to death to try to create effects like this. And now they're so easy. So easy. There. I think, I think this style of painting has opened painting to every person who's ever wanted to put a dream on canvas. Because everybody can do this. You don't have to, you don't have to go to school half your life to paint like this. You can do it. All you gotta do is practice a little and just believe in yourself. I know you can do it. If I know, you certainly do. But look at that mist. See it just sort of blowing up there between the trees? Hey, I like that. I do like that. Now, let me find my little fan brush. It's got the liquid clear, a little phthalo blue and white on it. And maybe back out here through the mist is some little water sneaking back out. There it comes. There it comes. It's just wandering around. Now, now there would be a rock there. Let's do it. Take some Van Dyke Brown, Midnight Black. A little dark sienna in it. <laughs> yeah, there he is. I know it's hard to see, but I'll put some highlight on him, make him stand out a little better. A little brown and white. And here we go. Just a little highlight on that rascal. There, see? Just enough to make him stand out. Don't want it to get too bright. I want this to be pretty dark down in here. But we know there's a happy little rock down there. All right. Something about like that. As I mentioned at the beginning of this show, this is the last show of the 30th Joy of Painting series. It's almost unbelievable to me that in the past 10 years we've done basically 400 Joy of Painting shows. And it has become the most popular art show in the history of television. And it's your fault. It is absolutely your fault. You have invited us into your homes. You made us feel like part of your family. And I appreciate that more than you'll ever know. So in case we don't have time, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you very much for sharing the joy of painting with all of us here. There we are. We're just making a little water that just, maybe it'll wander off over here. About like that. Mm. I really like these little waterfall things. Because you can make rocks under the water, you can just make as many as you want, have them go anywhere that you want them to go. Up to you, up to you. 
on this piece of canvas, you can literally do anything that you want to do. Take some black, Van Dyke Brown. I want to have a cliff. Big old rock lives right here. Big old rock. Mm, big rock. Mm. There he is. There he is. Something about like so. Least little touch of the brown and white. Just enough, just enough that you can see it a little bit, a little bit. Don't overdo. Just a little bit on the edge. Now, let's take, we'll use some of that nice dark color that we had just to cover up some of this mist. I'm gonna have a little, maybe this little bush lives up here, tree. It's getting bigger. My bush became a tree. Yeah, bushes do that sometimes. They just keep growing until they become trees, and that's okay. It's okay. Let's take a little bit of that same color, a little of the yellows. Just mix them together, like so. Give a little tap, a little push, get a little ridge of paint lives out here on the paintbrush. You could do this with a one inch brush or with a two inch brush, it's up to you. There, thought today we'd just use the two inch cause it's, it's what we got going, so we just keep using it. There we go, just load a little more color on there. Now if you have trouble making this stick, add a little tiny bit of paint thinner, a small amount of paint thinner to your brush and then go through the paint. The paint thinner will We'll thin your brush, or thin your brush, thin your paint. <laughs> oh, the old age is setting in here. It'll thin the paint just enough that it'll go right on top of there without any problem. There we are. All kinds of little grassy things that live in there. Maybe it comes right on down in here. Wherever. Wherever, wherever. There we go. But you can just make layer after layer after layer of these. Many or as few as you desire in your world. All right. Something about like that. Okay, now we just sort of let that wander off into nowhere. We don't care. Just don't care. Here's a few that hang over the edge because they don't just grow on the top. Some of them hang over, big old mossy things. They hang over there and have a good time. Going back to my little filbert brush, dark on one side, light on the other. But try that, this works great. See, dark, go through the light. Now you have light on one side, there you can see it good, and dark on the other. It's one of the neatest ways I've ever come up with of making a lot of little stones. Very easy. You just put them wherever you want them. And in one stroke, you can make both sides of the stone. Maybe there's one that lives out here in the water. Jumped in when he was just a little one. When he was just a little guy. Maybe his mother wasn't watching him. He jumped in the water and he's lived there ever since. A few little splashes right around the bottom here. Gotta cover up his foot so he won't look right. See, just have the water work right around that little rascal. Now it sets in the water and the water's going this is a super place to come and fish for trout. I know there's one that lives right in here. Big old trout. There. That little watery fall there. Mm. You can get carried away making these things and just get a little bit crazy, but that's okay. In your world, you make as many or as few as you want. Once again, it's a very individual thing. A little more of the green on the brush, but Notice that little ridge. I keep pointing it out. Give a little push, and that'll load the paint right on there for you in the right way. And then you can go up here, use just the corner of the brush, tap in some little bushies that live right there at his foot. Shoot, I think we're about finished. I'm gonna find my little script liner brush, and I think I'll sign this painting. I really hope you've enjoyed this painting and this entire series with us. We look forward to seeing you again in the very near future. And once again, if you have a minute, let the station know that you like this program. And maybe we'll be with you for many, many more years. Until next time, on behalf of all the personnel here, my partners, Walt Lynette Kowalski, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless, my friend.